up to him. Jaden Wareham. Oh, he's all right. Best played as a Mazala, you say? Okay. Nice jump, Alistair. Thanks. Crusader underscore Ray fifteen just resubbed for nine months. Relegation here we come. R bit rude. Lawrence Vigoro, a Chilean goalkeeper. What a name. Who wants him? Well, you do one Ross County. Let's have a look at the old finances. I've only got 741 grand in the bank. Did I ever play football? Yeah, I played nice professionally Nice jump, for years. Alistair! PJ underscore hooker 2018 just resubbed for 27 months. I can't wait for the pressers. I don't have a... I don't have an overlay. I need a... I need a... an FM... This is all I've got at the moment, which is obviously Forest, and that's all wrong. I need a new one. I thought that was when John Sitton was at Cambridge. I thought, wasn't he at Cambridge? Was he Orient? I think he was Orient. And you can bring your dinner. Fuller guys, he's still going. Where's he been playing? Let's have a look at the career history of Ricardo Fuller. Look at this. He's had a 20 year career in British football, mostly at Stoke in the Champions. He actually did score a few goals in the Premier League. Well, this was his best time was Preston. Hey, eh? look at that. Portsmouth bought him for a million quid. He scored one goal in the Premier League. That is a red nap signing if I've ever seen one.
Is that Afghanistan? David Najem, a right back from Afghanistan. A lad from Somalia as well. Simplecat98 just gifted five subs. Thank you. <clears throat> now then, what style of football do we want to play? Let's create our own tactic. This is nonsense. I could go for a classic 442. It is League 2 after all. But I think we've got um, we don't want this, this is nonsense. This, I like I do like this I do like this as a balance you know <coughs> where's my mazala possession we want a fairly direct reasonable tempo don't waste time play it play it out of defense <coughs> and we'll work the ball into the box be disciplined lads lose the ball let's regroup or let's be quick on the counter goalkeeper get it out of there throw it long buddy or actually make take short kicks short kicks and get it to the full Actually, we're going for a regroup, aren't we? Let's get stuck in. Oh no, actually, let's not get stuck in. Trap on the outside. No, I'm outside. And stop crosses, absolutely stop crosses. We'll call it flax for two, three, one. Yeah, job done. <coughs> Do 
Charlie Kelman is our striker, an American. He's dreadful. He's kidding. He can finish. He can finish. Nice jump, Alistair. While Mister just resubbed for fifty-three months. Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm sure it's introduced absolutely no new stuff at all. Think about it that way. Okay, yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Dan Hap has high potential. He could be even better than Omar Beckles. Unbelievable. What's our schedule? So we've got Peter Brave switch Yeovil City under three is our first game is Grimsby on the thirtieth. All right, home to Grimsby. Darren Mattox. Yeah, get these leads in. We'll have a look at them on trial. See what they're about. Is that the Danny Simpson? It is. Your 12 month contract. That's all we've got. That's the best we can do, son. Well, I'm sorry. Can't, can't do that. Uh, what about Darren? Darren Mattox is very quick. He's not a great player, but he is quick. He is apparently not a bad player, an important player in his prime years. Let's see if we can get him. No. Not going to do that. We can offer you that. It's a one year contract. It's the best we can do, bud. I can do a little bit more on the signing on fee. Unable to gain automatic qualification. If national student, he also doesn't have the quite number of points. Matic would struggle to be deemed a player of high enough standard for a work permit, even after an appeal. All right, never mind then. God, a fucking Brexit, eh? A tribe called Stretch. I went to Leighton Orient a few years ago, away a few years ago when my local team played them in the FA Trophy. Lovely nine hour journey for a 1 0 last minute loss. Nine hour journey. Where were you coming from? Abroad? It doesn't take nine hours to get anywhere in the UK, does it? Let's introduce ourselves to the squad. <coughs> I'm the new manager. Uh, I'm going to try to get young kids in. I think it's important we give the youth a chance. If anybody wants to take coaching courses, you can go for it. Uh, I want us to aim for the playoffs. Good stuff, boys. All right, there's the code of conduct. Great response. The player whisper. Hey, Lily. Where's Uncle John? Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. 
Oh, you're on a coach. Lord. Three one. Who's this lad? This lad scored. That doesn't bode. How do I see? Where's like, oh, development center. <coughs> oh, hello. He looks like he could be good. And Harry Smith. Very good j at jumping. And heading. God, I would have loved, why is he? Can we recall him from loan? Why is he on loan? Damn. On loan at Exeter. Well, that's silly. He's a big lad. I love a big lad. How big is he? I could never find this. Oh, he's what? Hundred nights? What? Uh, stream it's because there's a new version out he's six foot five and we've loaned him out <coughs> why nice jump alistair crit 45 just resubbed for 47 months are the old chill fm morning streams perfect watching while i work no music though Nice jump, Alistair! Darren Prattley. It's a V, Darren Prattley. Guy is as well. He's been around forever. I do wonder, you know... I do wonder if the... Um, if you've had a career in football, you've never really... Maybe you've played one season. Like, let's look at old Dazza Prattley again. So Darren Prattley's played... He started off at Fulham, barely got a game. This is when he was a youngster in Fulham. Nice league. jump, Alistair! Asamai Todger just resubbed for eight months. Hi from us. Hi from us, thank you. Good day. Then he went on loan to Brentford, came back to Fulham, loaned him back to Brentford... Then Swansea bought him, and that's when his career started. League One, Championship. Went to Bolton on a free transfer when they were in the Premier League. Played 24 games there. Then he was a Championship main. Got relegated with Bolton. Went back up with Bolton. Then he went to Cheltenham on a free transfer. Played there. Took them up to the Championship. Got, went back down. And then he came to Lake Norrin. I, I do wonder. So the game reckons he's on two grand a week here in, um, here in, in League Two. Sounds about right. How much money has Darren Prattley made over the course of his career? How well does he live? <clears throat> How well does he live?
Right, but he's he's on 2K a week as a fairly well-known player, right? So that's eight grand a month for a guy who is, let me see, hold it, that Darren Prattley is 37. So he's probably got one, maybe two, maybe two years of football at a professional level in him. So let's say, may, say he's made 1.5 million over the course of his career. He's 38, he's out of work. What does he do? I guess he goes into coaching. I'm just wondering how much for a guy who's bounced around mainly championship level football, how well off is, is Darren Prowley? What was he on when he was in the championship in 2010? What did he do with the money? Darren Prowley. You'd think he'd be on decent. You'd think the average championship wage is 100, 100k per annum. <clears throat> Could be. Could be. Thank you, Jamie Todger. I wonder if part of it, I mean, if you're making two grand a week in League Two, you know, that's that's a that's a bloody good wage. But what does he make? What would you make as a coach for a League Two club? I can't imagine that you'd be making a huge amount. They have to put most of the money on the pitch. John Joe Shelby was on 60. Well, I do not have one. I need one. <coughs> I think some of them just really want to stay in the game. Look at Rooney. Wayne Rooney didn't need to keep going, did he? Sure, he's made an absolute fortune. Guys, based in Minnesota. William Hondermark. What a name. William Hondermark. We need to get a lad in. Striker's always good to get. Russian Hepburn Murphy. 23. He is currently injured and will be for possibly three months. Can we get Tani Oluwasi in? Is he any good? Don't need a wing back. We've got a wing back. <coughs> Jed Garner or Ged Garner. Striker. Don't need don't want another bog standard striker. Look at this side. Matty Lund. Matty Lund actually looks pretty good. He's a bit of a nutter. He can play pretty much anywhere on the entire pitch. He's only slightly worse than George Moncur. Randy Mendoza. Basala Sambu. Oh, that lad's got some pace. Let's have a look. Ah. He's not very good at football, but he works hard. He's brave and he's quick.
He's a lad to bring on when you're behind and you want someone who's just gonna run all day. Yep, get him in. He fell to a late defeat against Peterborough. Well, it's no shame in losing to the posh. They're better than us. George McEachran is a good free transfer. All right, we'll have a look for him. Uh, let's see. George McEachran. Ooh, hello. Wait, wait, wait. He's a free agent. Why can't I have him? You cannot make a contract offer for this player. This player is away on trial date or about to be drafted in the MLS. <clears throat> but he's not on a trial date. What's going on here? Oh, we've made an offer for him, though. Let's see if we can sign him. Then cancel the... No, don't delay it for a week. We, we can't get him. We can't get him. We can't afford him. It would appear. Lots of training, lots of training. I want physical, physical football, lads. So remember, if somebody's making the uh, interview image, it needs to have enough space for my big round head atop a suit, it needs to have a suitable background, and the middle bit needs to be transparent. The middle bit, where my stupid face goes. <clears throat> like one of those things at the seaside where you put your head through. Are they ever going to go out of fashion? I hope not. Who came up with those? The minimum allowed pitch, absolutely. Get it nice and claustrophobic here at Lake Norrie. We want people playing in a tiny box. Because their players are from London. And we hire a lot of, get a lot of youngsters in from London. They used to play in those cages, those five-a-side, seven-a-side cages. They used to that close in, argh, bouncing off the walls, slamming into each other. They're used to that. Not used to these, the fields up north. This is a London club. Don't ever forget that. Come on, let's go. Football, 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 football. We're going to get sacked. We're going to be sacked this year. That's my, my prediction. 
Crowley was at one point on 12k a week at Bolton in the championship, which if he kept that for the length of the deal is 3.1 million quid. Pratley's done all right then. I think there are a few things that keep... Uh... I mean, I, I really want this lad. I really want this lad. Come on, get in here. Get in here, George. Oh, he's gone to Crawley. Where are Crawley based? Why the fuck would you go to Crawley, mate? Crawley? Where the fuck is Crawley anyway? Where's Sussex? Why the fuck would you want to go to bloody Crawley, mate? Sorry, why do we not have goalkeepers? Let's get some goalies in the squad, shall we? <clears throat> Pretty sure this guy's called Doodoo. Joe Doodoo. <laughs> um I remember I'm pretty sure Hang on, Dan. That's some good training. Uh, Paul, that's unacceptable. Um, goalies are in the squad automatically? Really? Interesting. You can give them nicknames. Squad numbers. Yep, yeah, well, that'll do. We're just going with the default squad. Whatever squad Leighton had, that's what we're starting with. It is what it is. can't criticize until it becomes a trend let me tell you something if you turn up to do your job and you're being paid two grand a week which is more than most more than anybody that lives in Leighton makes let's be honest I've been to Leighton it's a dump no offense Leighton it is not a wealthy neighborhood all right you're making two grand a fucking week and you can't be bothered to kick a ball and run about you just you're just dogging it as they say in America you're doing nothing you're just fucking slopping about like you don't care. Get out there and graft. These people save up all fucking year to come here and watch you cunts play. And you can't be bothered. You can't be bothered to fucking kick a ball and run about a bit with your mates. Get the fuck out of my football club. We did have a goalkeeper called the Brick Wall of Bolton. I'm told that... The Fanji Torre Rochdale story has legs. Gosh, how exciting. Scout him. I want to know how many legs does Fanji Torre have? Oh, uh, Mary is on the. Mary is good. Mary Christmas is uh, on the Southampton team versus Balliol College Oxford. We've got a goon on University Challenge. <clears throat> Indeed, the average number of legs is slightly less than two.
Oh my god. Alright, we got a goon. Average number of skeletons inside someone is more than one. What are you talking about? What does that mean? We don't have a big man, little man pairing. We only have a man. Pregnancy. Oh, yeah, all right. Very clever. Jaden, love your effort. Love your attitude. Good stuff, mate. Paul, Paul. Pull your fucking finger out, son. I'm going to start getting angry. <clears throat> I'm going to start getting jolly cross. Any new roles added, mate? I don't believe so. Transfers. Who's this? Someone wants Sunny Fish on loan. Currently, what squad is Sunny Fish in? Hang on. Is Sunny Fish... Ooh, can we afford to loan out Sunny Fish? Who's ahead of him? Jaden Wareham. Looks dece. Charlie Kelman is obviously our main striker this season. Rule Sotiruyu. Cypriot lad. And Aaron Drynan. Very determined, hard-working striker. You know what, Sonny? I think this is a good idea, mate. You're going to go off on loan. Best of luck. Uh, they're recommending Umar Nias. Chris Long. Well, Chris Long is injured. He's out for two months. Who else is in for Nias? Motherwell and Helsingborg. Approach to sign. He's not interested. Brilliant. What else have you got for me? Jamal Hector Ingram. Mm. Jordan Spence a right back of some note Chris Con Clark is already at loan, on loan somewhere Randy Mendoza, the name already sprang off the page believe me, Stephen Henderson we don't need a goalie Jordan Spence intrigues me an 11 month contract get Jordan Spence in We get Spence in at right back. We got strong fullbacks. That's important in this league. A lot of crosses going into the box. A lot of crosses. You want good fullbacks shutting that down. Wilfred Gnonto now tearing it up at Leeds. I didn't know that. Wilfred Gnonto was an absolute fucking ledge for this club. Not this club. Bolton. Oh, he scored so many goals. And that striker, that lad... Who was at Man City? What the fuck was his name? Vanished from the fa off the face of the earth. Was he someone's brother or someone's son? You guys remember who I mean? We got him in. Delap. It was Delap. Liam Delap. Wasn't it? <clears throat> he was fucking amazing for us. Scored so many goals. So many goals. Like Le Liam De La Wilfred Gnonto was just blindingly fast, right? But Liam Delap, if the, if he was, if he had a chance, he he would take. It. He was just clinical. Here we go. We're about to play a game. I think he must be Roy Delap's. Um. Son. Full name Liam Rory Delap. I would be astonished if if Liam Delap is not Rory Delap's son.
Rory Delap. It's Rory Delap's son. Rory Delap, by the way, is 40. He's my age. I am only very slightly older than Rory Delap. How different our lives have been, eh? How different our lives have been. Rory Delap, a man known for his long throws in football. I, known for throwing games of Dota. Do we want Spence? Jordan Spence has agreed to de a deal to join the club. We made a signing. Get him in. Get Spence in. Paul Terry introduced. I think he's fantastic. He's a terrific player. We're delighted to have him. Really. Registration. Where is he? Get Spence in. So we don't need these guys. Goalkeepers do not have to be registered. All right, Groovy. <clears throat> will the game know that, or will they come to me and say, unacceptable? They'll making a living playing football, me making a living looking like a football. That's very kind of you to say. Looking like a football. People love footballs. They're everywhere. I saw it. I saw it. Man, I really want to know how Miles gets on tonight. It's available at 8.30. Dong. Boopy dooby doop boop. Zooby doop booby doop. Here's a question. Is it still Paxman this season? No, dickhead! Angel just gifted five subs. We signed Jordan Spence and he's out for two days. Brilliant. Expectations for upcoming match against Grimsby Town. The board, nothing. Hoping to see Craig Clave return from injury. I'd like to see Craig Clave get back. Oh wait, they're all... We can't do Northern Accents anymore. It's the in-houses tonight, Rorts. I'd like to see... I'd like to see him get back from injury. He's been a terrific player for, for late near. You know, we're a good club. We're a good club. Do it. Make the changes. Yeah, all of those. Team selection. I like the look of it. I do like the look of it. Here we go. Let's go out there and get a result, lads. Luke Waterfall, what a name. Oh, they're playing a 4 4 2. Now here we go. Come on, the UOs. This is accurate. That's what it looks like. Wait. We want to set the camera for director, yeah, but we want TV. That's the camera we want. Um. Match speed between highlights, yes. Match speed during text only, yes. Match speed during highlights. Speed it up a tiny bit. Uh, sounds on, music on, yes. Let's go. Go on, Monka. Yes, lads. Good possession. Oh, no. You've been robbed there, son. Win it back. Good job. Great ball out to Archie. Good pressure. There's literally a huge block of flats in one corner. That's hilarious. We were sat, when I went, we were sat right here. And you could see people on the balcony. So Brett Pittman scored an absolutely superb goal for us. Absolutely superb. That's a shocker. Boo-hoo, man. Is that a thing? Good claim. Oh, 
hell of a touch from James there. <clears throat> That's good football. Lovely hoof. Yes. The young Cypriot threw a goal. Got to get some shots off, lads, all right? It's important to get some shots off. Let's have a look at the old tactics here. George, you're looking knackered, mate. Right, come on, chaps. <laughs> Unlucky Archibald. Nice job, Alistair. Uh -oh. Big Grumpa Bob just resubbed for 61 months. Watch him. Watch him. Nice job, Alistair. I don't like this. Big Grumpa Bob just resubbed save. for 27 months. Thank you. Oh, referee! Oh, Hap, that's such a bad header, mate. No! No! Oh! Yes, Archie. 
They're just winning it back much better than us. All right, we've got to work on something here. Let's get, we're, we're, we're too deep, we're too deep. Press them, press them, let's get on them, let's get on them. Get it, get it down the wings there, eh? And let's speed it up a tad. Speed it up a wee bit. There we go. That is a dreadful hair. Come on, lads, one more chance. Ugh, good clearance. They're finding these fucking balls way too easily. Oh, yeah, he's way off. Way off. Definitely wasn't shitting myself. Oh! By the way, I made myself absolutely massive. Got to do better, lads. We've got to do better. Part of that is the tactics. Need to work on that. Need to work on that. Uh, an inauspicious start. Didn't play very good football. Didn't play very good football. Timorous would be the word I would use to describe us. Timorous. Uh, not great. Not great. Distinct lack of quality, uh, especially some of our passing in the middle of the park was unacceptable. Really, really not great. Oh, here we go from Kieran. All right, hold on, we might have a post match. Might have a post match. Uh, need to add an image. 
My favourite was as I got new jobs, of course, I needed needed a new a new backdrop and the lads always came through. It's not, not quite enough room for my head. I don't know how I have to sit back. Well, you know. Well, I thought, wait, and what accent we're gonna go for? I thought we played all right today. Uh, at times we looked a bit shaky, created a couple of nice chances, but all in all, honestly, lacking a bit of grit, lacking a bit of drive, and some of the passes back in the middle of the park were, they really left a lot to be desired. I just think the players are still getting used to the way I want them to play. Obviously, it's early days, but uh, yeah, some signs of encouragement, certainly. I uh, thought the goalkeeper played very well, but you never want your goalkeeper to be the player that really stands out for you, you know. Um, so we need to work on our possession a bit better and work on our cohesion. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, early days, obviously we have, we've we dropped a couple of points, but at least we didn't lose the opening game. That always sets the tempo. Uh, I think it's left us frustrated but with some positives to think about. That's what I'm, I'm feeling. A few positives. <laughs> Good evening. I still, my favorite all time football image <coughs> is the tactics board that Mikel Arteta drew with a picture of a heart and a picture of a brain on it. I'll find it for you now. Um, and they're holding hands. It's, it's absolutely magic. Look at this. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. He he does a lot of drawings. It's like Rolf Harris as their manager, but without the sexual abuse. I just I don't understand why you can't just say to people, you have to draw a picture of a brain and draw a picture of a heart. Right, now, Crid, this is exactly what my mate said. Well, it seems to be working. But that doesn't mean that we can't ask the question, wh why? How are the players not bursting out laughing? They're all like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, brain and heart. And they're holding hands, which means we need to play with our heart, but we also need to play with our brain. And that's really, that's an interesting point, boss. That's a good one. So none of them are like, sorry, Gaffer, I've got to ask. Is that a picture of a brain and a heart and they're holding hands? Interesting. Will there be a colouring book available to us uh, at some point during the season? Because I, I would love to colour that in. League 2 preview. Swindon versus Salford is top billing. We are away at Crawley. Those bastards who acquired that player that I wanted. No, you're not the number nine. I just think it's funny. I just think it's funny. Come on now, lads. I want to see an improvement on last week, yeah? Yeah?
Red, if you go to Luton, mate, it's bang in the middle. You've got to walk past people's houses down alleyways to get to the ground. Ugh, fucking hell, that was poor. Let's be a bit more cautious about it, boys, all right? <clears throat> Moncur with a chance. Oh. It's a good football. Oh. oh, lads, what is this? Nice jump, Alistair. Beardy Chris just resubbed for one month. <clears throat> Thank you. Goal. Yes, Archie. God, Ogie's a big lad, isn't he? Great touch. Cracking finish. In off the woodwork. Walsall are a force to be reckoned with. Good stuff, boys. Good stuff, boys. Keep it going. Good football. Good chances created. Ogie, where you going, sir? Good ball, Prats. Oh, well, he wasn't ready for it. Yeah? Be on your toes, not on your heels. Come on. Oh, that's poor. That is poor. Oh, hello. Whoa.
That's a mad ball that somehow worked. Archibald Moncal! Nice jump, Alistair. TikTok Tag Lord just resubbed for 17 months. I've been waiting keenly for the return of FM streams. Me too. Bring back Brick Wall. Well, the Brick Wall, I don't know what, what Alfie's up to these days. Watch him, watch that runner in the middle here. Let's make some changes here. Hold on. We need to get a new striker on. Is this the the young lad from Chelsea? Let's get him on. Jaden, you're on for Charlie Kelman. As a pressing forward. Get amongst them. Don't let them rest. No rest. And uh, Craig, I guess you're coming on for. Hmm. George, can you drop back into midfield, please? And I'm going to put Rule on for El Mizuni, because I reckon, I reckon we can get a goal here, boys. Just, just poach. Just poach. Could just see you would see someone just getting a hot dog with five minutes to go that's what you would see normally getting a pie late corner here for Leighton Dog shit. There's definitely a ball in there. Still could have had one more go there. Need a win. I've been to Spurs Stadium, the new one, where they fill the pint up from the bottom, which is just the maddest fucking thing I've ever seen. Insane. Absolutely insane. 
they just put the pint on and then they go away and do something else and it fills it up exactly to the brim so they just get all the glasses and they just go clunk 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 and they just go and they go there you go And like the concourses, everything is just, it's like being in the future. It's so slick and pretty. It really is unbelievable. It's some magnetic thing, apparently, where, it, where they put it on there and something, something is magnetized or something. So it fills up. And then when you pick it up, it's something like that. Anyway, something to do with magnets, I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong. Can we beat Norwich? Go on, go it out there. We're League Two, they're Norwich. They were in the Premier League last season. We're nothing to lose. Do they still have? Are they, have they got Aaron Ramsey? No, they don't. Aaron Ramsey? He's at Nice. I guess they signed him. Different Ramsey? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Look, Norwich being in the Premier League at all is, in, is an impressive feat. You can't, you can't complain. It's like Bournemouth being up there. It's like, it's, these are small clubs. You know, they don't have anything like the money, the billions that these big boys have. We're never going to have a stadium like Spurs. Unlucky. That's wild, but I like it. It is a call. It is deflected. playing against their youth team. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, no, the um, the graphics and Football Manager have been dog shit for some time, haven't they? Like, they, they really have. Nice jump, Alistair. That is defensive. The Purple Penguin just resubbed for 16 months. Thank you. Hoof. Get this, Smithy. Yeah. That is just so poor. Yes, lad. Here it comes. It's 
classic League One football. Ball's just in the air 90% of the time. Someone get hold of it! Uh oh. Oh my days. I mean, yeah, the, the face gen thing is unbelievable. There are so many things they could do that they just... I don't know how they're able... I buy this every fucking year. That's the problem. There's no competition, and everybody that's an FM fan buys it every year, even though you know that nothing's going to change. Barely anything is going to change. And the things that do change, they make a big deal about something like... We have revamped the training system. It's just a UI change. Like, well, there'll be one more thing that's slightly different. This lad's absolutely torn us up. Nice jump, Alistair. Large man Chris just resubbed for three months. Love the football content, Flax. Who is your least favorite football team? Chelsea. Uh, let me think. I will be watching the World Cup. Um, I don't think that the whole separate sport and politics thing uh, necessarily holds weight because, you know, if the World Cup was in, na like, do you remember when the Olympics in 1936 were in Nazi Germany, right? You should absolutely be criticizing the place and the regime and how they got there and all the corruption, absolutely. But the players don't have anything to do with that. I think the fans don't have anything to do with that. And I kind of think if you, you, you can criticize Dubai and FIFA, and I think that's absolutely right. But, you know, the players have worked so hard to get there. I think it's hard to look past that. I'm supporting England and the players. I'm not supporting Dubai. I'm not giving them any money. So, what can you do? We're powerless in these situations. Unless every single person decides not to watch the World Cup, no one's going to listen. And it's all very well saying, well, that's where it starts. Nobody's going to do that. You know what I mean? I'm too small to make a difference. I'm not a politician. I'm not a f someone famous. I'm, I'm just a guy that wants to watch some football. And everybody else is in the same boat. And it's awful. 
and it should expose the massive corruption of the heart of people, which we know is there. We know it's there. What are you going to do? It's one of those dog shit situations, like all the rest. It's beyond me. I am but one man. One man who loves watching England. I'm going to watch him. died uh, I, I saw a table about the Olympics people that died building all the shit for the Olympics we're the only country that didn't have a single death not one you should be proud of that Let's go for it, boys. I mean, there's so many things about FIFA that are corrupt. It's, it's almost like they designed it to be corrupt. But at the same time, you could look at it and say it was designed to not be corrupt. For example, every nation, no matter how big or small, gets the same number of votes, right? Like if you're from Togo, nice job, you get one vote. If you're from just Italy, for 26 you get one months. vote, like the, the guy is in charge, right? So if you want to get your World Cup in wherever, you just bribe all the small, poor countries who will probably go for a bag of money. Like, uh, what was that guy? Was it Jack Warner? was the head of, of um, was it the Jamaican FA, was it Jack Warner? Who was unbelievably corrupt. And his vote, you know, you just have to buy a bunch of votes. It is insane that that many people died. Insane. What are they doing? You could build a stadium out of the bones of the people that died working there. He was the CONCACAF president. I mean, if you look, here's the, here's the page of Jack Warner, football executive, right? Just look at this. This is how you know he was a good guy. Early life, football administration, controversies and corruption scandals. <laughs> look at that! It's unbelievable. Sepp Blatter and Yao Havalang. These guys, anyone that looks like like a complete cunt like those lads do, you know they're a cunt. Wait, Richard Keyes? Oh, Richard Keyes. He's, he is like the ultimate scorned lover. Hello.
and we need the auto continue here because I hate having to click a button uh, preferences It's always going to attract, attract corruption. It's a non-governmental organization, which means it's lacking the oversight, right? Like, who's overseeing FIFA? FIFA are the guys in charge. Like, imagine if you had a world government, right? Like the New World Order and all that stuff. There's nothing above them keeping an eye on it. If you think about the UK government, we have select committees and we have the law and people are taken to task and people have to resign and there's a framework. Because they're essentially organizations independent from the government who and, and they like take their job Alistair. seriously to Elite make sure just that if something is a fuck months. up at the hey, very least, even if nobody goes to jail. Game, any team suggestions? No. Also, will this be an ongoing series? Good luck with reaching the prime. I wouldn't call it a series. It's just I love this game and I love seeing if I can take a team from the bottom to the top. So anyway, you can complain about the fact that how did they get away with this? How did they get away with that? It's all in the public eye. And that does matter because it does affect people's vote. They're like, did you see this in the paper, blah, blah, blah. And, and you get a reputation for being a piece of shit. You know what I mean? But if you have something like FIFA, who's in charge of FIFA? Who's in charge of making sure FIFA isn't corrupt as fuck? Very difficult, right? It's very difficult. Can we just be, let's be cautious. It worked last time. Who wants Vigoru? Huddersfield, hands off my Chilean goalkeeper, please. God, Jordan Brown, you are abysmal, mate. You are absolutely abysmal. God, Sumi, you guys are really bad. Omar Beckles, what a great name. Ogie's a good lad. I like Ogie. He's young as well. That's good. Young Shadrach Ogie. Come on, boys. Come on now, lads. Let's show the people of Leighton what we are about. And stuff these Mansfield bastards. Arbuckle to Hewitt. Lumps it forward to Swan, but that's... Oh, he just muscles him out of the way. marking lads Ogie no 
of woodwork. Give it Spence. He's through! Oh! They've got Pim in goal. Maker of the Pim particle. Let's play around them a little bit more, all right? Let's let less of the direct. Let's keep it short. Unbelievable, ref. Expected goals, I believe XG is. This lad's been kicking my boys all game. Get him off! Slots it. John Monker was a good footballer for West Ham for many years. Assume this is his son. Yes, thank you, referee. That's not how you spell cur, though, is it? Talking hot. Isn't it C O E U R? Do 
Jordan, that's unacceptable. Oh, he's looking for the give and go. Archie wings it back. Spence. Spence, that's another poor touch. Duke, the Duke, sends it in. Kelman! And bows down and punches the air. It's sloppy, but I like it. Terrible first touch from Spence there. Nice ball, tap, in, goal. Oh, lovely. Woo! Athletic from Hart again. Fans loving this one. We're getting the Olays. Olays here at Leighton. Good, good defending. Arbottle, that's such a northern name. Arbottle. Whoa! Oh, hello, that's hell of a ball! Oh, man! That's a hat trick! Spence driving on there. Great ball. Lovely first time pass. Crack. Keeper no chance. Oh, he's onside. Don't even fucking start that conversation. Mr. Arbottle. This sackcloth is unacceptable. I ordered 50 bushels of sacks, Arbottle, and this sackcloth is shot through, riddled with lice and, and moths. My sackcloth is as good as any in town. You know it. James, it's five.
fantastic result. A win and a good performance. Fantastic. Appeared positively chuffed. <laughs> so stupid. I bet that was a week of coding. Oh, hmm. oh gosh. Mm, mm. Appeared positively chuffed. Put it as a new feature. Team talks have been completely overhauled. You can now say that you're chuffed. Mansfield were 22nd in the league. I think they're now rock bottom. Next up, Colch. Yeah, Mansfield are now 24. That sent them down to the bottom. Get in the basement. Good football. Best football we've played all season. Press conference, of course. Oh. Oh yeah, tremendous result from the lads uh, today. Absolutely fantastic, and uh, you know, a, a deserved result. I thought we played some wonderful football at times, worked hard, um, and uh, yeah, we absolutely deserved it. And the the young lad, uh, you know, Kelman deserved his his hat trick. I think uh, I think he was good, but I've got to say, you know, he wouldn't have got his hat trick without his team behind him. It wasn't a one man show. Uh, he was he was the 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 point of the spear, if you like, but uh, why am I northern? Oh, he, yeah, he was the point of the spear, if you like, but it was the phalanx behind him, what what enabled him and gave us that rock solid beg to go and play some fucking football. It was uh, it was really really just just a terrific result. Uh, obviously, Mansfield, you know, they're struggling this season. They're bottom of the league. Good luck to them. Uh, I hope they stick with the manager and all the rest of it. Five nil. It's not easy to take. But it was a good good first win of the season for us. Good to stand by our authority on the league. And that puts us up to playoff positions, which is our goal this season. You know, getting the playoffs, try and get up to League One. It's what the fans want. It's what the club wants. It's what the board wants. It's what the players want. It's what I want. So, uh, yeah, we're open. This is a start of something. But uh, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Terrific words there from manager Perry and Flax. Data Hub. Must respond. Yeah, go on then. That's an induction. This is your data hub. Your analysts will compile information here to help you better understand the underlying data. We had strong momentum. We were performing well above average in attacking statistics. Adam Thompson is performing well above average. Good old Thompson. Uh, we won the match deservedly as we created better opportunities than our opponent. Fantastic. Good stuff. Expand these visualizations here. Shots per game. Look at that. Shots on target, 60%. That's good. That's jolly good. Weekly staff meeting. Put it in my inbox. Send me an email. I'm too busy. Oh yeah, the uh, press conference is fucking dog. I, I, my, my assistant manager has been doing press conferences for like the last, well, since they introduced it. I did it for a season, and it's now it's like, uh, press conferences during the week. They'll ask you all kinds of stupid questions. What do you think about Man U? Blah blah. It's like I'm in League Two. I don't give a shit. And then we the public will want to know. We're going to press you for an answer there. All right, here's an answer. Oh, fuck off. Like, what are you talking about? Tunnel interviews. Then there'll be full-time interviews. Post-match press conferences. Like, just goes on and on and on. And the only th the only thing you can do is fuck it up. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing you can do is fuck it up. got Lou Reed playing for him. Keep up where we were last time, boys. Just keep it going. Reese Devine. Reese Devine.
That was a goal. The Push Gas Award. El Missouri, Prattley to Ogie. Hunt. Ogie, that's not the ball, mate. Don't give away a penalty, please. No! Yes, Ogie. Let's watch those passes, yeah? Yes, Kelman, well done, mate. Moncur. Bam! Oh! Thompson gets there first. Oh, that's outrageous. Really putting it in the mixer. Oh my god! How did he miss? Nice jump, Alistair! D Charles underscore the one just resubbed for 26 months. We can find another gear here, boys. You lot are in third. I want you in fifth gear, yeah? I want you to up the ante and really take it to him. Olay's at 47 minutes away from home. That's outrageous. Good ball. James tries to get it in. El Mazzuni muscles his man. Sends the ball over. There's the header. Ooh. Jesus!
I reckon we can get a result here. Tell the lads to crack on. Great ball for Smith. Oh, that was outrageous football. Oh my days! We tried to copy him. Offside. Surely offside. Shame. Well, you know, I thought that uh, we scored a great goal. I thought we controlled the game. I thought we uh, we did some really good things. You know, they're not they're not a bad team, Swindon. They're hard to beat, uh, but they scored an absolute worldy. I mean, you know, you can set up defensively, attackingly. You can have the perfect tactics, best plays, but when someone hits a shot like that, I mean, what you just got to take your hat off to them. It was a hell of a goal. On another day, we win one nil. Today, obviously, we had to settle for the draw. Had a couple of other chances I think we should have took, but, you know, hard to complain. And uh, fair play to the lad. It's a hell of a strike. I'm sure it'll be on a couple of highlight reels this week. I'll tell you, maybe uh, see it on Twitter or something like that. But uh, I'm not on Twitter myself. I think it's a load of rubbish. But, uh, you know, either way, my kids love it, and they love TikTok and all. It's not for me, I've got to say. The only thing I... Uh, TikToking for me is my watch. You know, looking at 90 minutes, I think uh, that's, that's the only kind of. Well, right, anyway, yeah. Cheers. That's enough. I'll see. I'll see you next time. God, he's, he's all over the place today. The gaffer. I don't know what he's talking about. Heart report away next. They're last. Gen X. Gen X. I'm on fucking TikTok. What are you chatting about? What are you doing for lunch? Why are you always out of breath when the world is on top of you? I've got a lot of stuff on. Me too.
God, some of these lads are dreadful. I'll have a look, Jody. Jody. Come on now, lads. from Ogi. Majestic. Oh my god, what are you doing dangling it out there, eh? Madness, madness, my boy. Here it is. Oh. Yes, James.
fine. Retrophobia. That's tempting. We've got no money, unfortunately. I was going to look up a goalkeeper. Hold on. Someone in chat wants to know. I think it's if their brother is uh, in the game. I can't even remember Alfie's actual last name. He was just the brick wall of Bolt. What was he, six foot six? Not only Alfie Whiteman, that's it. Not only was he a cracking goalie. If you remember, he was my enforcer off the pitch. Any time a player came grumbling, I want you to have a word. Oh, Alfie, I want you to have a word with this young lad. He's been a problem. We'll do, boss. The boss says shut up. Hey, yes, Alfie. He was like my Mungo.
Oh, Kalman. Assisted three goals and scored one. Well, yeah, a tremendous result. Another high scoring game for us. Wait, I'm, I'm a company on. I keep for fucking forgetting. Um, just a great result. Uh, oh, George Moncur there, absolutely. He's a gem of a player, you know. He's got his head up. He's looking for passes, but he can score as well. He's tremendous, absolutely tremendous, and uh, you know, just a great result. Go to Colchester; it's our place to go, and uh, get another get another good result. Some great goals. Uh, I hope the fans are enjoying it. We're enjoying it. The players are happy. Spirits are high. It's a great start to the season. But as I keep stressing to the lads, and I'd like to continue stressing to the fans as well. This is a long season, you know. We've got a lot of games between now and the end. And we want to make sure that we're there or thereabouts. Which means consistency. We've just got to keep going, keep going. We've got to make sure <coughs> that we don't let our foot off the, the, the pedal. Keep going, keep pressing, keep scoring goals. And if we can do that, we've got a chance. Right, let's have a look. What was this clip? <laughs> Thinking of leaving the club. Right, let's have a look. I don't remember this one. Ah. Alright, Gaffer. I've, uh, I've been thinking that I might want to move and play for a bigger club. Is that right? Well, my lad, you sit there. <sighs> Alfie. Alfie appears in the doorway. Again, merely a shadow. Yes, boss. Ben here says he's uh, thinking of leaving. Thinking he wants to play for a bigger club. Alfie flexes. <coughs> Seems to grow four or five inches. The door frame starts to crack. <coughs> Forget I said anything. I'm, I'm happy where I am. <laughs> Alfie, I'll see you in two. Bizarre. Bizarre. How much money have we got? We're doing all right. We're losing money, but we're, we're doing all right. Charlie Kelman has scored four goals in five appearances. But look at George Moncur. Two goals and four assists and a 7.58 rating. George, you are a diamond, mate. Absolute diamond. <clears throat> All right, we were going to look at... We've got Noah Phillips, was that the name? Noah Phillips, 17-year-old goalkeeper. Well, there he is. He's not going to make it in my club. Unless he really improves. Really got to see him step it up. 
Is is your brother a lazy bastard who hates his teammates? He has the worst first touch in football. No technique. Is he weak and extremely easy to push over? I want you to test this for me, all right? I want you to see, set your brother a task and see if he gets it done. Ask him to think of something. Like imagine something, test his vision. He's not an eccentric lad, he's a straightforward lad. I like that. I want you to throw a ball at him and just see how bad his touch is and put, try to push him over because he should be very weak and lacking in balance. You should just be able to, just the slightest touch, you ah, it should go flying. Um, but he makes some good decisions and he's reasonably determined. He needs some, he needs serious work, but he is only 17. People pleaser. You have a happy squad. Good stuff. Well, that's because we're winning for the time being. Once we get a big L, morale tanks. <coughs> Listen, it's been one of my issues with football manager for the longest time, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again. How can you have a low work rate and high determination? If you describe someone, he's a, he's an incredibly driven and determined guy, but he's incredibly lazy. Be like, so how do you know he's driven and determined? He just, he is absolutely determined. He never gives up on his goals and he works hardly at all to make sure that they... Are you saying Ronaldo? Okay, dude. Literally the most successful footballer of our generation. It doesn't make sense. Omar Beckles. These are the players' contracts who are going to expire. These are the recommendations. Matty Lund. Dees. Oh, he's the really aggressive uh, Northern Irish lad. John Joe O'Toole. Well, we just stuck five goals past him. Cole Skews, 36. That's a no. Liam Ridgehaug. Liam Rydal. Rydal. Don't need him. Jack Muldoon. No. DJ Buffong. Very determined, but incredibly lazy. Florent Hotty. I like Florent Hotty. Young, Kosovan. Decent attributes. Bournemouth. How are they doing? 14th. Oh, yeah. Who's Sariki Dembele? I don't recognise that name. I bet he's been at our club for two years. He has. I don't remember him at all. <coughs> Jefferson Lerma suspended. Gosh, that is a surprise. Philip Billing has been absolutely superb for us this season, by the way.
I mean, there's still plenty of time left for us to get absolutely trounced later in the year, but the depth to our squad is almost non-existent, which is another problem. As usual, nobody's paying attention to what Bournemouth have done. Nobody. We may as well not exist. It's like every single article I see, Bournemouth are barely mentioned. We're just not a club that exists. Everybody's sort of like, Bournemouth? Ah, well, just, you know, it's always been that way for us. Hartlepool are 23rd. Same again, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go. We're in front of our own fans. I want to see a dub. You guys know what to do. You know what your job is. You've been doing it this season. Let's keep going. Yeah, a little bit of a tug there, ref. You can complain all you like, son. That's some kind of ball. That guy's name is Oda. Kelman through to Monker. To the Duke. Oh. David Ferguson managed. Have you noticed the players are actually like sliding along the ground to block shots now? That's quite nice. Ooh. That's a deep one. Oh, lucky. Odua sniffed out the danger. From Spence there. Great ball. Mizuni looks up. Still going. Gives it to the Duke. Duke down the line. Mizuni into the box. It's Kelman's goal, but it's offside, I think. Dog shit. Oh, who gives a shit? <clears throat> oh, hello. Why don't play? The Duke! Oh! Is he doing the controls with his penis? You've shown your ignorance there. You don't know about Football Manager. At this point, a game as steeped in history as Football Manager, one of the top selling PC titles year on year. That's on you, sir. Football manager. He's in FIFA. Some button masher. This is a game of the mind. Mainly losing it. Monker. Oh! Could have put it across there, George, just saying. Bit greedy.
What is this lad up to? Oh, they're going to score a goal. No, they're not. Okay. Well, maybe. Oh, this is a fucking thriller of a game. That's a highlight. Oh, here we go. Yeah, ball through the middle. All right. Well, oh, they almost hit their fan. <clears throat> to be fair, I wouldn't travel from Hartlepool to Leighton. That's a hell of a journey. Watching Chelsea is really rough this season. <laughs> Good. Scum. Worst fans in, in London. Worst fans in football. Absolute scum. It's like they hoovered up all the racists in London and they all support Chelsea. I need a club that's racist. And all the other people that support it are racist too. I think I'll be a Chelsea fan. They're cunts. Oh, I'm a cunt. I'll fit right in. Smith, that was exceptionally good until the finish. It's ironic because Chelsea's a really nice part of London. But it seems like the fan base is all the absolute cunts in London. Oh! Yeah, Millwall are, Millwall are pretty fucking bad. Let's put Millwall in the conversation too. Go on, George. Oh! Niang seems to be quite a common name in football. As does Apia. There's another African name that's quite common. Fulham Adelaide. What was his name? Big midfielder. It must be like the Smith and Jones and names like that of, uh, of the regions that they come from. Olise is another name. Nice jump, Alistair. Donald Stone just resubbed for 24 months. Thank Best you. thing about Chelsea fans is the film Football Factory. Yeah, Dembele seems a very popular name. It's a great name. Oh, right off his toes. Working the ball into the box. Yeah, Ghanaians. What was the name of that lad? Offside again, I think. Kelman, no! Traore, yes. Traore. Yeah, Nguyen is like a very popular Vietnamese surname. I mean, that's like half the blame people called, like from Vietnam seem to be called Nguyen. I mean, you could say the same thing about Kim and South Korea. It's like Kim is a very, very common name as well, isn't it? And Lee. Let's be positive here, boys. Come on. This lot of shite. 
<clears throat> That's a great ball. Kelman's through. Park, yeah. What's the what's the common name in France? Would you say? I have been to Kenilworth Road. It's a uh, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But you know, small town club. Small town club. I like the character. I'd rather have a, a stadium that you remember going to than one that's just like, like ours is just the most photo fit. If you had to describe yourself as like, well, I didn't really get a good look at it. it just looked like an average bloke. That would be our ground. It's just a box. Hey, we play fair ref. We play fair ref. They don't punish that, please. Thank you. Tumulty, Tumulty. Regan Tumulty. Great name. Let's go. Let's go. Kelman. Bottom left. Yeah! You can't believe it. What's going on? Mart Martin, Bernard, and Thomas. Really? Thomas? What about Deutschland? Steiner? How popular is Hitler? How popular is the last name Obergruppenführer? And how many people have a Von? Müller. Müller is very common. Like the yogurt. Von sounds like it's like from. I was right. Here's a good footballer name. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbeck. That's a great name. Shame he played for Chelsea. He did also play for Leeds, didn't he? Beckles. All the way back to Spence. Spence has been a top quality signer for us, by the way. Soteriu! Oh, doesn't get a second bite. If Lionel Messi's last name had been Stank, if he'd been Tim Stank, Tim Stank, S T A N K, do you reckon he would have been the footballer he is? Do you reckon he would have been as marketable? Would people walk around with Stank on their back? Or if there was a really, really top top footballer and his last name was was Ars, like there there have been some some footballers whose last name is Ars. Danny Shitu played for QPR, didn't he? That's a funny name. Stefan Kuntz. Ooh, we get hotty. Get him in. Danger Fourpence. That is just a fantastic name. 
Oi, vei. Where's Hottie? Tell me he hasn't gone to the bloody development center. Get him in the senior squad. Cheeky Arce, Rod Fanny, Danny Drinkwater. Oh, it is quite a funny name. Brian Pinas, P I N A S, Fabian Assman, Credence Clearwater Kuto, Mark Deman, Peter Panda, and Norte Naughty. Paul Dickov. That's quite funny. I always think there are some really good, really good last names like Hazard. Target. Those are good last names for a footballer. Bastian Schweinsteiger. Which, what is it? Pig climber? Or pig manager? Like pig watcher? Pig farmer, essentially? No, there's a guy called I think it's Matt Hazard. Plays for played for Villa. Matt Matty Cash, that's a good name. Was it Matty Hazard? Matt Hazard. Apparently not. But there was a there's a Thorgan Hazard, Mickey Hazard. Mickey Hazard. So English former professional footballer. Played for Chelsea. Mickey Hazard. Great name. Hulk, well the here's the thing. I don't you can't read too much into these Brazilian names, right? Because it's not like a family name, is it? It's not like the guy was actually christened Hulk. Like, his parents didn't say, let's call our son Hulk. And Fred, yeah, or Fredge, as it actually is in, in Portuguese, I think. But let's look up Hulk footballer. What was his name? It's going to be Nuno... De, yeah, here we go. His name is Givanildo Vieira de Souza, known as Hulk, right? It doesn't count. doesn't count you can't just say i'm i'm called hulk so well what, what what's your actual name oh well it's giovanildo vieira de souza but call me hulk it's like all right well and it doesn't count you can't make out that's like a cool cool name because you've picked it it'd be like if i called myself spider-man like wow your parents called you spider-man no no i just want to be called spider-man what's qp qualifying player all right cool what are we playing in here Florent, you can be number 33, mate. I realise that I... Oh, we're in the Papa John's Trophy. Let's go. I realise that I go by Perian Flax, right? But that's an online username. I'm not getting people to call me that in real life. They call me Ted. This is it. There's three fans here. This is Crystal Palace. Oh, I've got to play against Crystal Palace under 21s. Fuck me. Barry, that's a good question. It depends on who you're talking to. Um, for example, Cinderin's name is Trolls, T-R-O-E-L-S. For any Danes in chat, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but it's something like 
trolls, right? It's something like that. And you can't just call them trolls because it's wrong. Nobody calls him trolls. He's Sind. People will always call him Sind. Uh, Aeson's name is Stephen. I only call him Aeson. Scriff is Scriff and Weppus is Weppus. Um, Fogged I call Yanis because I like the name. But I'll refer to him as Fogged sometimes. I'll call Gabe Gabe most of the time. JJ is JJ. But who else? Let me think. I call Suns fans Cinderin. Uh, uh, Shannon, sorry. Owen is Owen. Although I call him Owen OD Pixel Davies. That's how I, I announce him when he enters the room. Um, <clears throat> Trent is Trent. Arvo is Arvo. I don't even know Arvo's first name. Genuinely don't know Arvo's first name. He's Arvo. Sheebs is Sheebs. I'll call her Jurian sometimes. Um, but I'll normally sing it. Jurian, Jurian, like that. Jureen, Jureen. Uh Who else is there? Uh, Tsunami is Neil. Jenkins is Jenkins. BSJ is BSJ. Um, Lacoste is Lacoste. T is T. John and MLP, I, or Mike and MLP, I'll call them Mike and MLP. MLP is MLP. Or I'll call Mike Mukadan, which is his real name. Mukadan, because it's such a great name. What a scramble in the box. And who got there? Sweeney. Um, lizard is Lizard. Blitz I call William, or Will. Um, Insania I call Aiden. Matu is Matu, Zai is Zai. Boxy is Boxy. Owie is Owie, or I occasionally call him Curtis, but mainly Owie. It just depends on the person. Owie dear. Yeah, that's a very famous football story. For anyone that doesn't know it, I'll tell it. Um, Ali Dia phoned up. Uh, sorry, let me just make some changes. Phoned up Graham Souness and pretended to be George Weyer. And he said, look, I've got a cousin who's really good at football. You should, you should give him a go. So they get him in. I think they played him in a training match and he ran about a bit and they were like, well, let's give him a go as a sub. They chucked him on. He was on. I think they, they brought him on and subbed him off because he was obviously dog shit, but he did almost score. Like he had a shot. It's just mad, it's absolutely mad. But yeah, to answer your question, Barry, it, it is definitely a thing that people do. Uh, referring to people by their usernames. People call me Ted or, or Flax or P Flax. Although Shannon always calls me Pyrian Flax. That's what he does. I mean, Shane calls me Ted. Mum calls me Ted, you know. Shiva calls me Pyrian, I think. Owen calls me Ted. It's just one of those things. If your name is short, people will use that if your username is longer um, it's different I call I mean Slacks I'll call him Slacks or Jake mainly Jake but I've known him a long time and Jake is short if his name was like Malcolm he's getting called Slacks right it's just one of those things I mean, you know, I'm sure you've got mates. I've got mates we refer to them by their last name only. Because we went to a, a school. At our school, everyone was known by their last names, right? It's like the way the school did it. Because they wanted to be all formal and shit. 
So some of my mates are only ever known by their last names, and some by their first. But it depends which sounds better to your ear. And you just, you know, some people call them different things. Like my mate Mark, people might call him Mark, people might call him Spark, Sparky. I don't know why Sparky is a nickname for Mark, but it is. I mean, I know it rhymes, but Ted rhymes with head. People don't call me head. They call me Ted. I don't know if that's an, Eng an English thing or a British thing, calling people by their last names. Is that something that people do? Anyone here from outside the UK? Is it common? Do you guys refer to each other by last names or is it always first names? Yeah, Lloydie, that's good. Lloydie's good. Common in Ireland. Feels like a military thing. In the Netherlands, I don't know anyone who does. Interesting. So uh, there was a there was a lad. He's my best mate. He had a twin brother. They were obviously in the same class and year at school, and they were both known by their last name as a collective. Because to be fair, they are very similar and they are identical twins. But um, they were only ever known by their last name. Had a buddy with the last name Kosiboski, and we called him Kossi. Yeah, Kossi, that's a great nickname. Kossi. Oi, right, Kossi. Lloydy, that's also good. I mean, when it comes to the Yogs, it's a bit different, right? Because a lot of the Yogs have their name as their username. Like, no one ever calls Tom Angory Tom, right? It's just Tom. Ben is Ben. Lewis is Lewis. Simon is Simon. Harry is Barry. To be fair, Lydia is Lids or Lydia. Jermothy is Jem, right? Mousy is, I, I it's Hannah, isn't it? But I only call her Mousy. Booth is Booth because it's just a funny name. But I'll call her Sophie as well. Ozzy is Rosie. It's Ozzy, not Osi. I've been calling her Ozzy for um Osi, but it's Ozzy because it's her name's Rosie, right? So mo a lot of people like Duncan is Duncan, Rabs is... All right, Rabs is Rabs. <clears throat> Not Jonathan. No one calls him Jonathan. He's Rabs. But Rabs is a good nickname. Big Lids. Connor Wood. All right, Connor. What can I do for you, mate? Oh, fair enough. Yeah, good luck to you, son. Speaking of great sports names, have you ever seen the names of fictional American baseball players? Yes. Yes. Mike Truck, for example. Um, the origin of some nicknames is quite funny. Uh, we t we do not want do not want to take any part in transfer deadline day. Thank you. We want to crack on. We've got an important game at Tranmere Rovers coming up. Had a mate called Fraser who went on holiday as a teen and won some swimming comp. Got a certificate or something. They called him Fraser. Then he got so far he now goes by fridge <laughs> like fridge freezer. That's fucking hilarious. Kelman gets young player of the month. Young American. Young American, young American. Oh, he's only on loan. Shit. Big fridge freezer. 
ledge. My sister has a job where she's been working with higher ups at Twitch. She has zero understanding of gaming or gameing culture, so I've been giving her a crash course. She just doesn't understand online handles. It's hard to, I guess it's hard to explain. I, I was literally thinking about this. No word of it. I was thinking about this the other day. I chatted to Mrs. F about it. How weird it is that I have another name. And I was, I was thinking about how to explain to people that you essentially come up with a name for yourself that you that suits you that you're comfortable with um because normally you don't get that chance do you normally you don't get to choose your name unless you go through the whole fucking palaver of changing your name or whatever but online you just it, you've got the freedom to put, come up with a new name whatever you want to go as um my kids call me papa Papa? They call me Papa. I didn't tell them to do this, they just do it. It warms my heart. It makes me feel like a like a character in a in a some Russian play. No, that would be Papa. Papa is the posh version. Not Papa. But yeah, so you could come up with your username, but there are some problems. There are some problems. Number one, if you come up with your username when you're like 13, right? You're stuck with a dog shit name, which, which is unfortunate. All right. George, well done. George 9330. It's, I mean, it's just such a catchy name. I mean, it's difficult, right? Like, No Tail is a prime example. No Tail. So named because he was playing World of Warcraft. He was like 13 years old. He wanted to get in there so fast and just he wanted to get on with it so his character didn't have a tail so he called himself no tail so he could just crack on with the game now the guy is a millionaire several times over one of the most famous video game players of all time tried to rebrand his big daddy which was a disaster he's no tail i mean seb was fucking mad took what, six years out from playing? Managed to rebrand as Seb? I mean, you know, an iconic Dota 2 moment. The big axe call from fucking mad. Fucking mad! No, doesn't work. <clears throat> That's a cracking goal. I mean, a Amar, right? Amar the fucker. Rebranded as just ATF. Woof! Blue Zephos is just... I mean, what is a Blue Zephos? But, you know, you come up with a username. It's just something... You don't think there's going to be any logic behind it. I my my original online name that I went by was the Right Reverend I am Legend because I just read the book I am Legend. I was like, that's quite a good name. Dog shit.
Super Pun Man's <laughs> DJ H3 Max or DJ He Max or whatever. I mean, at the time, I was playing a lot of um, Allied Assault, and you just needed a World War II sounding name for our clan. So we had sergeants and lieutenants, so I just I was I was the chaplain. So I just went for Right Reverend I Am Legend because I thought it was funny. Scoring for fun here, boys. <laughs> Profit of screw fix. I quite like it though. Retrophobia. I just made mine because I'm obsessed with retro media and thought I'd, it'd be ironic, I see. I made my Gumsil account around the time I read Dark Knight Returns. And you still have to explain what the DKR stands for. <laughs> but whenever I read your name, I assume you are... You misspelt that you are an urban developer. But now I suspect your name is just Anirban Dev. This is the only name of a magic card, which is what I made it to watch that wasn't real. My name is just based on the book I wrote. I see. Bit of free advertising there. Nice jump, Alistair! Peritix just resubbed for 12 months. Thank you. That's a year. Happy anniversary. Great ball. George is through. And George does what George does best. It's a first half hat trick from George. Look at this fucking finish. This combo, the Missouri Monker combo, is absolutely insane. going to hit it. Oh! Shawnee Babes. A tradition of all new lads posted into our troop had the nickname Fish until a more suitable one came too late. Except one day we had W new lads first got called Fish, second Chips, and as he was the first, he has been Chips for the past 12 years of his army career. I see. I think I understand. Very funny. Must be a riot being in the military. Nice jump, Alistair. Franklin 512 just resubbed for six months. Afternoon. Damn. Yes, yours is great.
Mine is about onions and also an acronym. Very good. Did you say earlier that you didn't like the vitality? I like your stadium because of the giant pictures of notable moments in Bournemouth in the corners. I think it's a nice touch. It's just because there's now else there. Like it's just filling in the total absence of stadium in those corners. All right, lads, come on now. Let's not give this up. Why is he clean through? Mine was from an early StarCraft 2 cast where someone said blinked roach instead of burrowed roach. That's it? That's all it took? Blink roach? <laughs> he means burrowed roach. Oh, oh, that's my username. That's my username. Jinx. You know, uh, happy with the points, obviously, but um, I mean, George's first half performance was absolutely superb. He's been he's been phenomenal this season. You all know that. Don't need me to tell you that. But that second half uh, was a bit of a concern. I think the players, you know, we haven't been put under pressure as much lately. We've been we've been winning games quite comfortably. So I want them to be aware. Yeah, I want them to be aware that you can't let up in this league. You know, you can't just sort of. Uh, take your foot off the gas and be like, ah, oh, we've got this. 3-0 is a good scoreline, but 3-2, that last half hour was, you know, a bit edgy at, at points. And uh, I think we got a bit lucky in the end there. They'd done well to come back as, as, uh, as well as they did. And it was a good couple of goals from the lab. But we've got to be better than that because uh, Tranmere, you know, they're right down there. They're 22nd. And we're, we're right at the top. We shouldn't be struggling against a team like that. That second half was unacceptable. And uh, the fans were voicing their concern at the end. And one, one bloke spat on me when I was on my way down the tunnel. And I said to him, no, fair enough, mate. You know, spit on me again next week if it's this bad. And I'll stand by that. Whew. Is a game of two halves. John Job Ao Akinde. What a name. Fantastic. Do 
Nice jump, Alistair. Max Dollar just resubbed for four months. FM Flax. Best Flax. Niang, that's another common name. Niang. I just want to see the stats for this game without having to load this every time. Here, this lad. If you've got the last name Mumbongo, which is an amazing name, it's a shame your first name is Joel. 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 McStolid. That's a good name. Do top. Do top table team managers actually take the piss out of lower table teams in the lower divisions like that? How do you mean? You mean being like this lot of shite? No, you don't do that. You don't do that. Who's number one on FM streams? Is it Jack Work the Space? Second yellow card. I think this guy also does uh, interviews. He's got a much snazzier stream I do. setup. What I'm looking for here, hang on. What's the one I'm looking for? Look at this. Look how much more professional this lad looks than me. Look at this. Look at this lad's stream. He's got music. <sighs> Henry, thank you for the 21 months. Look at this. Contracts to extension. This pops up. Animated. Pops up. A little shirt with that person's name on the back. And says contract extension. Look at this mic. Look at the room. The lighting. Look how slick like, this is. They all sort of bubble to the top slightly naturally. Hello, Kev. How's it going, friend? Look how happy he is and how nice he is to people. Unbelievable. Hello, Prophet of Screwfix. How are you doing, my friend? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, no, we're, we're playing a bit of football manager today. I could do that. RGB everywhere. Strobe lights across my face, filtering like I'm in some kind of cyberpunk cafe. Microphone like this, lights, scenes, animated subscriber alerts. Unreal. It's not me. It's just not me. And be honest with yourselves, it's not you either. That's why you're here on the worst stream on Twitch. Week after week, day after day, night after night, grafting this dog shit stream. I need to do that thing where you you go like this when you want to talk about something like that with my stream deck and you see me you see my arm move because I'm pushing a button so you, you see it like like that as I change between scenes and do that yeah I think it's a good point yeah thanks for the sub anyway let's get back into it like that real slick like there's a producer there you know You're a perfect second monitor stream. You don't demand attention. I think that's a compliment. I think that's a compliment. Nice jump, Alistair. Thank you. Hudson Hawok just resubbed for 18 months. Thank you. 18 months of this dog shit. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I will say? We've got an awful lot of long time subs. People who've been here for like a good few years. How do we get rid of them and get some new blood in? How do we get rid of the dead wood? Get them out, get some young kids in who are really excited to watch RGB shit and animated bollocks. Oh, Archie, is it the back of your head, son? Roblox.
Okay. That's a hell of a goal. You've got to applaud that. You've got to go on the FM stream of Showdown, I reckon, and pretend to be someone you're not, and lull the viewers into a false sense of security. They don't want the likes of me. I know what it would mean. What demographic am I bringing in? Grumpy old fuckers like me. In March, I'm going to be 47. Consider that. That's old. won't stop. Alright lads, step it up, yeah? We've got to do better. This is what um, AFC Women's Ground looks like. It's pretty pretty good, actually. They actually seem to have made some effort this year. Let's get at them, boys. Let's get at them. You get nothing for nothing. Come on. Good job, Ogie. Yep. Oh. John Dice. Well, I'm, I'm out of work. I'm currently, you know, doing a bit of gardening and uh, rumbling. Filling in for the sound of a, of like a rubbish truck going past. Actually, that's a, oh, that noise. I, I'm doing that. When, when they're on strike, I just go on and able to growl them. Make people think the men are still working. I've asked, I've asked uh, Chris Nolan, he's a mate of mine actually, he's a Burnley fan, does he need a new Batman? Was that to do the voice? Swear to me, 
swear to me. You know, I could do that. I would save a bit of money. Trying to do the audio. Gotta stop Joker. Joker's gotta be stopped. Commissioner Gordon. Come on, lad, get on it. I could do Batman. Link with Rangers and West Ham. Come on, lads. I think we're, uh, we're fucked. Yes, Jordan. That is such a poor ball. That's been our game this week. Ref! Yes! Let's, let's go, lads. Come on. You fucking asshole! Nice job, Alistair! Oh, Reviews God. underscore Sanity just resubbed for 15 months. Let's go leave him. God damn it! Where and that was such dog shit, son! Ugh! Well, you know, not a good result at all. Uh, not happy. I thought we created a bunch of chances. Didn't have a good day in front of goal. Didn't have... Uh, I mean, you know, you get a penalty like that, you've got to take it. You've got to take it. There's no two ways about it. You can't You can't be spurning chances like that. And uh, and we have done. Uh, so, not, not good. Not happy. And the fans aren't happy, I know. Uh, I want them to know I'm not happy. My wife's not happy. The board ain't happy. The players aren't happy. The only ones who are happy are AFC fucking Wimbledon. Who cares about them, eh? What have they ever done? Oh, dearie me. Just just not a good result. I thought we did create a bunch of chances. Another day we take them. But uh, I don't want to hear, you know, players moan about, oh, I'm tired, boss. Look, you're a professional footballer. All you got to do is play fucking football. Well, that's all you got to do. you got nothing else. you got now else on. If you're knackered, that's on you. Anyway, we've got Rochdale. Got to get some points there because the next game up is Walsall. That's a big game. They're looking the best team in the division. We've got to beat them. We've got to be our best. So I want to see uh, things picking up. And next week, I'm hoping a bit more bit more, uh, bit more, more composure in front of goal. We're snatching any chances or we haven't got time. We've got time. Get the ball down. Get it over. Wall it. Oof, he's not happy. Gaffer's not happy. This is a big game. Well, I, I don't know why you're saying Mr. Forsyth. Perian Flax is the manager of this club. <clears throat> Late and born and bred. And uh, what he says, you know, what he says, he, he, he says what he means. And uh, whatever's written on the tin and all that, you know. You get what you what you. Yep. Beckles and Ogie. Well, we could do a bit of ball playing, defender from Beckles. He can actually pass the ball a bit. Nice jump, Alistair. D20 Spoofy just resubbed for five months. At Pyrion Flax, thank you for all you do. Always a pleasure to work from home and have you on screen near too. You're welcome. Bear in mind that what I do is play video games and talk. I just shout into the ether. That's it. It's gibberish. It's not even a job. It's, it's, it's made up. And once the people catch on, it's all over.
Ebanks Landall. That's a good name as well. This lad's last name is just John. Good header from Mizuni. Smith. Do something with it. Use it! Slicker. That's a good name as well. Monka! What is that dance? That's what his celebration was. <coughs> exactly, basics. Done you there. Yeah, easy all day, son. I've, I've, I'm working on a Jordan Peterson impression. You just have to say you have you have to. I, I've got to get the voice down, but he says it's like okay. Right, but then we have this other thing over here, and it's like, all right, let's talk about that. He's got certain things he always says. It's like, no. It's like this weird Canadian-ish accent, but it's like Canadian in a way that other Canadian accents are not. Smith, yes! He does, he does that weird thing where he's, he says that. It's like, and then no, like, like he's talking to an imaginary person. It's like, well then, he's got a, he's got a croaky and, and sort of vulnerability. So odd voice. Oh, Smithy, he's done it again. He's done it again. The right back scored twice. <clears throat> we'll show the people of Rochdale what it's like to play football for a living. Kieran Slicker. His name needs to be Sam nice Slicker. Job, Alistair. Sam Slicker. just resubbed for 21 months. Yes. Smith just walking them in. Had fun watching T this year again. Nice job, Alistair. Only saw just resubbed for 37 months. Three years down and starting on a fault. Thank you. God, I'd love to be a footballer. What a life. It must be so exciting. To score a vital goal. Just imagine what that feels like. Just imagine what Aguero was thinking when he takes that touch. <clears throat> it's such a good goal. The way he takes the time, you think he's just going to hit it, takes that extra touch, smashes it in. Can you imagine that? Knowing you've just won the league, with the last kick of the season, <clears throat> it must just be it must just be an unbelievable nice feeling. Job, Alistair. Brother lover sixty nine mm. just no wonder they stick around. Month. Footballers don't like you know. Oh, it's been five years. I'll oh, fuck off. They they stick around. I mean, Darren Prattley, for example, in this game is thirty eight, still going. Probably been playing football professionally for twenty years. You wouldn't want to leave. That feeling is always there. And what do you what do you fill it with when it's gone? Drugs. Drugs and women. Who have they ever made happy, eh? It's just not the same. Drugs, booze, women, 
and tons of money. It's just not the same. Nothing can fill that hole. <laughs> Where did the crowd go? Well, they're 22nd in the league and they knew they were going to get stuffed, so I wouldn't turn up either. They're off, having fun. Drugs, women, alcohol, cars, but no money, that's the thing. Cheap drugs, cheap women, cheap cars, cheap fun, the best kind. Jagielka is 40 and still going. He does play for Stoke, though, so some sacrifices have been made. It's true. Every young man's dreams will eventually come crumbling down. <laughs> Stonkin 4-0 win. Nice work, lads. That's us in second. If we beat Walsall, we go top. All right. Where was Grealish? Apparently he said that he said he would take one and they didn't want him. Um, my daughter cried. She's never watched football before, but she cried because I was crying and everybody else was crying. In the stadium, you could see people breaking down players. She was so excited. That's the goal Italy scored was fucking dog shit as well. It was something, though. First final I've ever watched us in, in my life. It was exciting. It was great. The whole country was out and about. It was fantastic. Everybody cheering. It was brilliant. Chiellini definitely should have been sent off. That was an unbelievable foul. That's the problem with fouls in football and penalties in football. It's something that they haven't figured out yet and it's just a part of the game. But the idea that if it's outside the box, it's just a free kick. It means the value in fouling is too great. Right? Way too great. Because if I, if you're, let's say we have a corner and the ball gets headed out and it falls to their lightning fast striker, right? Lightning fast striker. He's going to be away. We're not going to catch him. And I scythe him down or just trip him. It's not going to be a red card for through on goal because he's got the whole pitch to run. It's going to be a yellow card and a free kick. But the disadvantage to us of that free kick and that yellow card is nice so minimal. Nice job, Alistair. Defender for so you just resubbed for 36 months. There's no, there's no motivation not to do it. In rugby, you have like penalty tries and shit like that, right? Like the severity of what you did should result in a larger reward. Let's say there's, let's say we're halfway through a game, we're two nil up, and one of your lads is a particularly tricky lad, and we are just kicking him up in the air, taking it, tur taking turns to do it. Trip him up, pull him, kick him, give him little digs, rake his heels. What do you get? A little free kick. Free kick is dog shit. At the very least, a foul anywhere on the pitch should result in a free kick much further up. How about that? How about there's a as an area that you're allowed, if it's a foul anywhere on the pitch, the free kick is, if it's a cardable offence anywhere on the pitch, it's a free kick outside the box. Why not? Sinbin would be an answer, but, you know, we get enough fucking stoppages as it is. The only issue would be, can you imagine how long it would take? 
There's a, a yellow card for something over here. So everybody has to walk all the way over here and set up the free kick. The game would be the, half the time. The, the You know, it's bad as it is. Well done on your training. Really well done on how well you've trained. Jaden. Disappointed with your training, mate. Step it up. That's dog shit. Big game this. Can we get a result? Leighton Orient versus Walsall provide top billing. Damn right. It's at our place. Get them down the Orient. We'll see what they fucking make of it. <clears throat> I don't like Craig Clay. I don't think he's very good. Stick to the plan, be patient, don't give them silly chances, all right? Walsall are no mugs. They're top for a reason, but we're second for a reason. Show them that we deserve to be top and they second in our place, having vacated it to go top. I hope I've made myself clear. Good point, MC Stolid. Arteta couldn't... He would have to draw a picture of the league table and then draw a picture of him looking sad if Walsall was still... Oh, they crashed into each other and Kelman is the wrong goal! And Kelman wastes it! Yeah, he just got under the ball a bit there, Jeff. Get your head down and put your foot through it. I love when the commentators make out. It's so... He's just got to get his head over the ball, get his head down and put his foot through the ball. You're right. Christ. Oh, hello. Oh, my God. How are Ma Mansfield are above us with a negative goal difference. I love that. Ah, oh, shit. He's hit it too well. He's, he's almost hit it too well. I mean, I know what, what they're saying is he's hit it too true. If it had some swerve on it, it would have gone in, is what they're saying, but it just sounds ridiculous. Beckles make it a meal of this. Oh, there's a, he was giving Smith time to get into position. Smith is clean through. Oh, oh my days. Oh, lucky Smithy. Oh, Smythe. Oh, Joey Barton. Yes, I've seen this. Poodmund. This is his uh, this diagram of all the football bullshit that he writes on this uh, big start. Turn them early. Play in their half. Squeeze space, contain the transition, lock them in their half, attack, best form of defence, you're unique, a one-off, a true superstar, be brave, show football courage. I mean, it's just... Honestly, I would take...
That is glorious. That is glorious. Barton's French interview is amazing. The lad's just not, he's not all there, is he? Uh, you have to uh, win the game. It's like, you can't just do a French accent. If I thought he was clever, I think it was a very clever joke. But I don't think he's clever. Steve McLaren's Dutch interview. Let's have a look. Hang on, let's have a look at the Joey Barton French. As I said yesterday, I make one tackle, and all everybody speak about is this tackle. Nobody speaks about uh, a 50-yard pass that kills Balmon and, and it causes a red card for him. Um, <laughs> and nobody sh talks about the shot that um landru would have uh, been happy to to see you know he didn't see the ball never mind uh, have a chance to save it so for <laughs> me it's important that people speak about uh, the qualities i bring as a footballer and uh, i'm a little bit bored you know from the english media and hopefully the french media is have more about has more about it than the, the what is that what is that Bij FC Twente begint de spanning behoorlijk op te lopen. De Turkers spelen woensdag voor het eerst in de geschiedenis in de voorronde van de Champions League. So what's funny is the the Dutch print announcer or commentator is has the exact same intonation as when this is in English. But he's just saying it in Dutch. Tegenstander is Arsenal. De wedstrijd wordt door de verbouwing van de Grosveste in het Gelre Dome in Arnhem gespeeld. The up and down and then up and down. Up and down and down and up and then down. Up and up and then down and down. Yeah, um, unfortunately obviously we all know about uh, Blazen Kufo. He's suspended for this game and the return. Uh, a big loss, one of our big players, big goal scorer. Uh, we're also missing uh, Yusef Hersey through injury, um, but everybody else uh, has come through and we've got a full squad. The hamvraag is natuurlijk, gaat win. I sort of knew uh, when I came here in the Champions League, uh, Liverpool or Arsenal, I thought maybe one of them we would draw and uh, it is Arsenal, I think, one of the, the toughest teams in the draw. Is this the one? And I think it will be uh, very, very difficult for our players, but also a great experience. Uh, we have a young team, and to experience uh, big games, Champions League. Big games? The experience of the big games? I'm Steve McLaren, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here, managing in the Netherlands. And, uh, you know, we just got to try our best. Why did my assistant manager say call them cunts, which is apparently what happened because they all went red. Gaffer, you got to tell them we're not happy with that. The underdogs, the underdog story, you know, got to try hard and uh, put the ball in the goal. The secret to football is to score more than the opposition. We did that today, but on another day we might not do it. That's all I have to say about it. I'm Steve McClellan. Good. What's everyone's thoughts on Welcome to Wrexham? So, for me, it started off quite interesting, but they're never in Wrexham, right? Because they've got these careers and they've got to be filming movies and TV shows and whatever it is they're doing. So, half the time, it's just them on a Zoom call making jokes about 
Oh, we don't know what we're doing. Whoa, Wrexham, go, what's it all about? The actual coverage of the games and the football I like and how the players are getting on with teams and everything. That's quite interesting. Um, but too much of it is just get some B-roll of a bunch of fans in Wrexham saying, oh, yeah, they're trying their best. I think they're great. It's great to have them here trying their best. Although that's not how people in Wrexham sound. Um, it's just a bit, you know, it's all right. But so many times the stars of the show are essentially just on a lot in LA between shots. And um, it's sort of adds, it makes it seem a bit distant. Like I, I understand why it is, but it feels distant in a way where you think it, that's a shame. Like it would have been more fun if they were there. I feel bad for the lads they sent in as representatives and how the, the players basically are not having any of it. Uh-oh. This has goal written all over it, unfortunately. Well done, Ogie! Sotiriu, he's through! Can he find the pass? No, he can't! Kelman picks up a loose ball, turns. Won by Badly Morgan. Comes back to Spence, no matter. Get Prattley on. Sit in there. Ball winning midfielder, defend. Uh, and let's got Wareham on for Kelman. Wareham, I want you to be a pressing forward. Just get at them, son. Worry them. Don't give them any time on the ball, yeah? Monker with a delicious delivery. Oh, Missouri to Smith. Smith gets it under control, but it's robbed by Maddox. Maddox is a cracking name. James Taylor. True to Hutchinson. Hutchinson is clean through. Can the defenders catch him? He's a quick lad. Vigaru. Can't hold on to it. Spills it. James picks up the loose ball. James here with the throw it to Ogie. Has time on the ball here. And here comes the press. And Ogie sends it over to Beckles. Beckles to Spence. Spence with space to run into. Brings the ball forward. Plays it wide to Smith. Smith can't beat his man. Spence. Does get past his man. He's looking to send the ball in. There's the cross. So true. Bennett clears it. Only as far as hot. Hot to James. James. Missouri. Mizuni. There's a shot from range from Hotty, but it's easy for him. Yeah, good movement there. Good effort. So Tyrion on the ball. Turns. Finds Hotty. Hotty the time. It's a ball. A little, a little excuse me pass inside. Oh, it's just over the head of the defender, but Evans able to smother the shot. Come on now, lads. No freebies. Nice. Wareham chasing down Month. Soterio inside to Prattley. Prattley with a nice reverse ball to Mizuni. Into Wareham. Wareham has space. He's got time. He finds Smith. Smith through on goal. Oh, that'll seal it. That'll seal it. Paul Smith runs over to Leighton fans. They're going top tonight. And the pubs in Leighton will be heaving, won't they, John? The superb goal. Wareham's pokes it through to Smith. You think he's taken two on. His first touch is heavy, but he brings him inside, lifts it over the keeper, and that will set a lead, and that's all happy. I think we're going top anyway. One of my favourite football documentaries is the QPR one. The soundtrack is superb, like Tame Impala's soundtrack is really good. <clears throat> the storylines are fantastic, the Italian owners are hilarious. And in comes Neil Warnock. Nice work everyone, that was good. <clears throat> Beating expectations. You gained 90% board confidence. We are... We are top league. No, we are top league. It's all going to come crashing down. Because it's like they get all these managers in and they get they give them like one game and the owners are like, these guys fucking stink. What are they doing? Get them out. They finally bring in Neil Warnock and he actually does like, you know, 
turn turn the fortunes around but it's just it's such a good documentary it's really good if you haven't seen it look it up the four-year plan so good by the way if you don't follow neil warnock's twitter account you're a mug i don't know if it's actually him but he's fucking hilarious get someone else to help you you can bring your fucking dinner classic absolutely amazing no uncertainty in that man <clears throat> no uncertainty his voice doesn't wobble they could come at him right then and there and he still achieved what he wanted. He is literally offering to fight these lads after the game. Two on one. And they three on one if they want and they can bring the fucking dinner. That's something else. Imagine if they turned up, steak and chips, some green beans there and they're like, all right, boss, we brought our dinner. We've got our mate John as well. And we're, we're ready. He'd be like, all right, lads, let's go. He's just up. He's absolutely ready. This is the rock. But Ogi is not picked. Where Ogi? Ogi is tired. Very well. This is the Papa John's trophy against Exeter. We're going to put Smithy in for, for Monk. Oh, we're not. Uh, who have we got that can play there? Oh, we've actually got a few players injured at the moment. I don't want to risk the goodies. Oh, some of 
these lads are awful. Vigoureux, it is a, a good name. Oh, Wareham's through. He's made an absolute meal of that. Oh. Uh-oh. What's our chances at the World Cup? We have a very good chance. We've got a good squad. Defensively, I'm worried. That's where I'm worried. Maguire is pretty... Like, he has played well in an England shirt. People are forgetting that. But he, has, he was in the... In the last World Cup and in the Euros, he was good. Like, he was a good player and he was like a rock you know um, some big tackles some big headers some big moments brought the ball out of defense occasionally like he he, he did all right Dyer is not a center back and we sh shouldn't be played as one he's a he's a lumpy midfielder like he lacks he lacks he he, he just lacks in general he's he's okay he's not someone you'd want to hang your tournament on like, Raheem Sterling has basically been England's best player for the last two tournaments, in my opinion. Raheem Sterling has made things happen and has been superb. Jack Grealish did well last at the Euros as well. He did he did well. He was like, came in, made things happen, looked exciting, looked fearless, you know? Rare to see an England player not let the expectation get on them. He was, he wanted to play. And these guys, you know, they play for big fucking clubs. They're used to playing on the big stage. Champions League, finals, and all the rest of it. We need that. I think a lot is being put on Jude Bellingham as being like, we need, we need Jude Bellingham to step up. We need him to be that creative fulcrum in the middle who can actually drive the game from there. Because the one thing we are lacking is someone in the middle who can really dictate the game. And I think, you know, people like Henderson, Declan Rice, good players, good for England. Jordan Henderson ain't beating two people and putting a pass through for the striker. You know, that's just not him. He's solid, unspectacular, semi-dependable. Not a lad that you think, oh, yeah, Jordan Henderson, he'll win us the World Cup. Someone like, you know, the expectation, like Gazza. We haven't got a Gazza, do you know what I mean? Someone who you think that's our st our star in the middle who can actually make beat anyone. Oh, where am you fucking turd? Um. So yeah, it's it's an it's an interesting one, but I do think we have a good squad. Stones goes missing sometimes. Maguire, probably the low point of his career in terms of his confidence and what the fans think of his performances has been fucking awful. So I think what we'll do is 
I mean, Trent Alexander-Arnold is having a bad season as well, isn't he? He's not looked good for Liverpool, defensively especially. He's been caught out a lot of times, ball watching or out of position. Goes in when he shouldn't, you know. It's like we've forgotten how to to play. Trippier's good, solid right back, like Trippier. But again, he's not like a defensive superstar. I think we'll have Alexander-Arnold and Trippier. Um... And I think it'll be a back three of Stones, Maguire, and um, what's his name? Plays for Man City. Played as a right back as well. Walker, Kyle Walker. We need him because he's quick and he's strong. And although he does make mistakes, he's he's the guy who can help us recover. You know what I mean? Like you need that. You need a player who can get back into position. Magu yeah, exactly. He does show up for England. Like he really does. Like Maguire has been good for England, but it's just can he put what's happening at Man U behind him, where he's basically getting fucking so much hate. Rightly so. He's been dog, and turn up for England. I hope so. I mean, Gareth Southgate seems to be a good. That's offside, ref. Gareth Southgate seems to be a good leader of that group. I don't know if Walker's injured, I hope not. Up front, I mean, Harry Kane scoring goals at the moment, isn't he? He's looking decent. And you fucking Phil Foden. I mean, Phil Foden's amazing. What a player. But where do you play him? That's the problem. Going out round of 16. I mean, the the, the 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 weird thing is, right, is that we're talking about Southgate in a negative way, despite the fact that he has been the most successful manager that we've had since Alf Ramsey. A final and a semi-final, back-to-back. That's insane. That is insane. Like, that, that is really something. Um, but because he fell short, you know, he's no good. I think it's unfortunate. But he does some odd things. He does some odd things. Too defensive sometimes. Lack of attacking flair. Like, you know, he sort of, he'd rather put on a defender. It's like taking players off where you think, no, no, you've got to keep them on. Plays it safe. Doesn't look for that extra sort of killer goal, you know what I mean? Sometimes I just think we lack a bit of uh, belief. You just want, he's a little bit. The substitutions make you think, Jesus, why are you sitting on one nil? These guys are no mugs. Come on, Hottie. Oh, he's done it. Just calmly side foots it. Look at that, an entirely empty stand. The people of Exeter do not care about Papa John's pizza. Papa John's what? Never heard of it. Pizza? Oh, no, no, no. No, I don't like foreign food. I think that's the away support. Special this lab. Nice work, everyone. We escaped by the skin of our teeth.
You know one thing um, that Football Manager is lacking that Out of the Park Baseball does really, really, really well is weird things happening outside the game. Uh, funny comments that pop up as messages and, and stuff like that. Like one of the things that happens is players will get injured in a weird way. And that happens in football. Like, was it David James or was it... What was his name? Is a goalie. He played for Spurs. Dropped a jar of mayonnaise on his foot. And couldn't play. You know, he was out. Stuff like that. And that happens in out-of-the-park baseball, you know. It, it, like, attacked by a dog. Or something like that. Um, as an injury. And the players will come to you and say, oh, I want to set up a charity and things like that. Oh, it wasn't Friedel. It wasn't Friedel. He was English. Um... It wasn't Walker. It's in the 90s. Anyway. Also, the statistics it gives you... No, not Robinson. He was younger. Older, older, like, further back than that. Um, it pops up with interesting statistics, like about attendance there. We should have popped up and said that the away attendance of that game was only six. Something like that. Just a little statistic to add a bit of flavour. Because the game knows it's there. It records these things, but it never comments on them. You have to go looking for them. Dave Besson. Yeah, yeah, Dave Besson. Maybe not at Spurs then. Dropped a jar of mayonnaise on his foot. Put David James was a muscle uh, for the TV remote. That's right. How can I see what the attendance was at that game? So, this game had an attendance of how do we see that they normally show it Ten thousand, a hundred and nineteen away fans there were 1,000 fans 119 away fans for the game against Walsall we had attendance of 5662 what's our what's our capacity Oh man, a nine thousand three hundred people, nine thousand three hundred and eleven capacity. The youth stadium is the old Chigwellians Club in Chigwell. There it is. <coughs> Football freak injuries. Roy Carroll was collecting balls from a goal during training when he got his foot caught in the net and injured his knee. Richard Wright ruled out of Everton's FA Cup fourth round replay at Chelsea after suffering a freak injury during warm-up. Wright ignored a notice wanting him not to practice in the goal mouth and promptly fell over the sign, suffering a twisted ankle. He also damaged his, soldier, sold his shoulder falling through a loft as he was trying to pack away suitcases. Rio Ferdinand, during his spell at Leeds, managed to pick up a tendon strain in his knee watching television. He had his foot up on a coffee table for a number of hours and ended up injured. Sean Flynn. The then Kidderminster captain suffered a broken nose, busted lip and bruised toes after tripping over his son's toy cars. Dave Besson, out for eight weeks when he dropped a bottle of salad cream on his foot, severing the tendon in his big toe. By the way, salad cream is the most disgusting fucking condiment. Uh, I'm going to go on record as saying that. Salad cream is I'm pretty sure only exists in the UK. It is fucking revolting. I hate it. It's so bad. It's re it's absolutely disgusting. Put it up there with Sasha. Nice jump, Alistair. I'm underscore smile just resubbed for 73 months. Salad cream or salsa? I take salsa. I do eat salsa. I do eat salsa. It's just not my main thing. Imagine being a professional footballer and explain to your coach, teammates, and fans you fucked your entire season because you just needed a bit more salad cream. Alex Stepney. Oh, yeah, so David James tweaked his shoulder trying to land a carp when he was fishing as well and pulled a muscle on his back reaching for the TV remote. Alex Stepney dislocated his jaw while shouting at his defenders during a match against Birmingham. That's not an injury. That is a badge of honour. Chick Brody, attacked by a dog, ended his career. The Brentford goalkeeper's career came to an abrupt end when he collided with a dog which had run onto the pitch. Brody shattered his kneecap while the dog got the ball. 
The dog might have been a small one, but it just happened to be a solid one, he reflected. Santiago Canizares, Spain goalkeeper, missed 2002 World Cup after accidentally shattering a bottle of aftershave in his hotel sink. A piece of glass fell on his foot, severing a tendon in his big toe. Casey Keller, knocked out his front teeth while pulling his golf clubs out of the boot of his car. I imagine they were stuck. Bang! Like that, I can imagine it. Oh! Alan Wright. Do yeah, anyone remember Alan Wright? Tiny fullback. Strained his knee by stretching to reach the accelerator in his new Ferrari. <laughs> That's amazing. Steve Morrow broke his collarbone after falling off the shoulders of Tony Adams while celebrating the 93 League Cup final. Sven, Sven Grondelen, Norway defender, had to withdraw from international and international during the 70s after colliding with a moose while out jogging. Barrow. Can we beat Barrow? We the Darius for Darius for some. Missed several games after he drilled through his toenail with a home power drill, thinking it would relieve the pressure on a swollen toe. The attempted DIY surgery succeeded only in giving the toe an infection. It's incredible. Leroy Lita, who went on to 21 International, damaged the muscle while stretching after he woke up. Charlie George managed to cut off his toe with a lawnmower. Darren Barnard slipped in a puddle of puppy urine. Christ. Where the fuck is Barrow? Barrow in finesse. Where is it? Oh, it's just near Dendron. Christ. South of the Lake District. Who knows where these places are? Oh, was it a pen save? Was it? Oh, it was Marvel.
Only one major road to everything's a nightmare to get to. I can believe it. It looks, I mean, I'm sure it's lovely. Demand more. I want more! Come on, lads. Wake up. Unlucky. Gary O'Neill, yeah, seems to be doing all right. I mean, we haven't gone down yet. Check back with me at the end of the season. It'd be nice if we signed some players that were, like, really exciting to watch. Because at times we can be fucking diabolical. Just create nothing. This has been poor. Deserved. We've been dog shit. We've been dog shit. Come on, lads. These fucking balls are shocking. Oh, Smith's getting sent off. Fucking icing on the cake. Absolute dog shit. Oh my god. Well, what can I do? I mean... Can you make four subs now? Since when? What? When did that come in? This year? Three goes? What do you mean three goes? Nice jump, Alistair. What's so I can't bring on five fresh players all at once. Months. Wowzers. Oh, so I can't do a sub, a sub, a sub, a sub, a sub. I'd have to do like two of them. Two of them, one of them, or three, one, one, like that. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. Oh, well, luckily it looks like Walsall also lost.
Oh, they lost 3 2. 96th minute from Tranmere. Good job, lads. Kept us in it. Right. Oh, Barrow are third, to be fair to them. Right. Get a bit of a break. I might give us, because we're all looking a little bit tired. Let's get a let's get a rest in there. Just once. Because I was wondering why it kept popping up and like I've made my three subs and it kept popping up and saying you should swap this lad. I'm like we can't. We already made our three subs. Interesting. Yeah, Smithy, not good enough, mate. Well, look, we can look up the competition rules. Five from seven, max of three stoppages. Because half time wouldn't count as a stoppage. I guess it's to stop teams wasting the last 10 minutes of the game by just bringing on five substitutes, one after another. Cyprus's latest star, Rule Soteriu has spoken of his pride at winning his first cap for Cyprus under Tamuri Ketsbaya. Anyone remember him? Doesn't appear to be any sound on this vid. Still, Ketsbaya trying to get the cross and Atlas Tony is screaming for it. Gets it. United have plenty of bodies in the box. Among them is Shearer. That's aimed for Shearer. Shearer gets his head to it. Out comes Brannigan. Gets a touch. And gets fire. He's on hand to block him. Shearer's touch. And Newcastle are back in front. Well, extraordinary gestures from Timuri. Gets fire. He's ripped off his shirt. Absolute nutter. Love that. Love that. He tries to take his boot off. He he was so... Like, every time the ball came to him and he was anywhere within sight of goal, he'd shoot. He shot from range so much. It was mad. Did it ever come out why the fuck he did that? I might have to mute this. Because there sounds like there's music. But this is Football's Funny Moments, Best of the 90s. <laughs> Jeez. Christ. Whoa! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> what about Barnet? Oh my god. Ari. 
Yes! Bam! Right in that lad's face. I love that. He's not looking. Now he sees it. No time to react. Pow! That's his specs everywhere. Oh, I remember that one. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> I love kids crying at football. Always makes me laugh. And he booked him for it. Fucking knobhead ref. Oh, Fox. Disgusting. Oh. Ooh. Oh, that was a classic. Oh, wow. That's probably the worst penalty I've ever seen. Oh, this is famous. Ronnie Rosenthal. Ronnie the Rocket Rosenthal threw on goal. Oh, this is my favourite. Look at this. Lol. He was... He Wasn't that... Was that Paul Adcock was his name? Do you remember that bit where um, Paolo Di Canio pushed him and he fell over like <gasps> like making such a big meal of it. Get up. Get up. Well, I guess Cantona kicking the fan didn't count as a funny moment, but that guy was a cunt. I want to see a marked improvement from all of you today. And if you don't like it, you can come and see me in and afterwards. You can pair up if you like, you can bring a mate, and you can bring your fucking dinner. Because after I'm finished with you, you'll fucking need it. I mean, that was the pitches back in those days were just dog shit compared to what they are now. They've all got under under soil heating and drainage. It's all way better. Oof. Bogle. Bogle. Rock right, right. Oh, Ogie, we didn't need that. All right, back to Beckles. Oh, referee! Seriously? The interesting thing to me is, if you listen to um, Quickly Kevin... Will he score the podcast? It's just called, I think everybody just calls it Quickly Kevin. A really, really good football podcast about football in the 90s. Oh. And it felt like football was big. You know, this is the birth of the Premier League and everything. And huge names and great matches and good football. But also just a bit more comedy. It, it didn't feel quite as clinical and boring as it is now. But that's when I got into football was the 90s. And for a start, loads more teams had strikers that were good to watch and attacking players. And it was 4-4-2, not one up front. It was 4-4-2. Now it's just all fucking... Everybody's just one striker. Where's those old, the old days with the partnerships? You know? It was so much more exciting. 
the managers were bonkers. The players were bonkers. It all felt a bit more chaotic. And fun. Now it's just methodical. Every team seems to play the same way. They're just either better or worse at it. Like the idea of a Wimbledon happening again is... Oh, we are just straight from these guys. Like a club like Wimbledon, who've got all these awful people and some like characters playing for them, bizarre stories. Never again. Never again. Like, if you look at France 98, go and look at the teams and the goals. They just seem to have so much more character. I feel like the Premier League now is, is more of a fucking product. It's less interesting. And VAR is just fucking icing on the cake. They've sucked. They've successfully sucked all of the joy out of football. Bigger than ever. It's obviously what people want. These fucking consortiums buying the clubs. <clears throat> I'm sweating under the arm. Am I getting some FM sweat on? Tiny, tiny bit, not too much. basically just run by these businesses not by an owner who loves the team you know just some some rich foreign bloke or some massive consortium this lad's called Dolan someone They really uh, started to come at us in the last 10 minutes or so, eh? Good job, Ogie. Good ball. Spence, head up. Yes, down the line, the Duke. First timer, Sotriu! Oh. I also think the commentators are all really boring. They're so similar. There's, there's, they don't have their own style or character. They all sound the same. It's awful. Who's a commentator you love listening to now? Martin Tyler's still very good. But like, Brian Moore's gone. Wolfenstone gone. Motson, if you ignore the last few years, and he was clearly too old for it, gone. I think Martin Tyler's been covering football long enough that. Also, I suspect a lot of these guys are Man U fans. So they're all very emo. Tilsley, fuck off. Why fucking Tilsley? He's the worst. Peter Drury can fuck off and all. Awful. Dog shit. Matterface can fuck off. I don't mind Tyler too much. Jonathan Pierce was good when he used to do Channel 5. When that was where the European Cup won his cup and the more dog shit like the Intertoto and stuff like that would be on. But Jonathan Pierce here Chelsea, in the snow, can they do it? That sort of gravelly voice and then Robot Wars. You kind of think, Jonathan, what are you doing?
You know, I, I do like Gary Neville in terms of what he's... Like, him and Carragher have quite a good bit of chat. <coughs> Seem to say what they're thinking. Roy Keane is just a fucking... Playing a character at this point. There's no leaders on the pitch, right? Look at these Manu players that have come in. Big name players. These guys should be playing for big clubs. They're good players, but they're not playing like good players. And we keep saying they're good players, but are they good players if they haven't got the pack? I'm just wondering, which of them is, is grabbing hold of these young lads and saying, look, you've got to do better than that. I'm just, you know, I remember back when I was playing at Man United, Alex, Alex Ferguson understood that, that I would have more over the players than was expected of me, but I don't see any of these players in it. I can't imagine them pulling them aside and having a work. It's unbelievable. That's all he does. It's just, like, as far as he's concerned, tactics, not a factor. The factor is, where's the running? They're not running enough. You know, he's like, he's like, a, he's like a fan. You know what I mean? It's like a fan watching. And someone doesn't run down a ball. And, like, slide into a hoarding. You don't want it! Outside of the boot. I did see that clip. I don't think it's entirely fair. He's not going there. Like, is Gary Neville going there for the Qatari for the Qatari government, or is he there with the BBC or Sky? Like, if he's there for, like, officially hired by the Qatari government, but he's there with Sky Sports. And, I, I mean, come on. He, he's covering the World Cup. He's one of their main pundits or commentators. I just, I just think, you know, the guy, you know, it's his fucking living. Give the guy a break. I mean, you want to criticise anyone, fucking Richard Keyes, how about that? The mouthpiece of Qatar. Or wherever the fuck he is. I think he's in Dubai, isn't he? See, in Dubai, I guess you can probably treat women like shit and nobody gives a damn. Most of the people I know go to Dubai. I have no fucking interest in going to Dubai. Why the fuck would you want to go there? You can't even drink. What's the point? Imagine being in a really fancy hotel where you can't have a drink. What's the fucking point? Can't go out to a pub. What is life? What is life? Is that even living? Unreal. Josh Gordon is player of the month. Yeah, he's, he's, he did well. If your life is just drinking, then yeah, I can see why you wouldn't enjoy that. What is this anti-alcohol slant that's been in chat the last few nights? What's wrong with you lot?
find it again. You can't smoke weed in Dubai. I think you'd probably get stoned to death or something. Grovesy, that's a pun. Shocking from Teddy there. What did I say? Oh, I didn't mean it as a pun. Come on. Didn't mean it as a pun. You know me. Didn't even occur. That's how far I am removed from the world of punnery. Oh my god, George is out for four to five weeks. Oh, he's the he's the fulcrum around which we turn. This is a disaster. Here we go. Look at this will inspire us. Three points available. A collective bed of discipline. 11 to 18 men. Decide to be victorious. Big start. Get and keep a momentum. Win opening gambit. First five minutes, next five, and so on. No reaction. Expect mind games. Turn them early. Show football courage. Force them to turn around and dominate second balls. Win battle. Play in their half. Be brave. Two, three, five, one, three, six. Pin them in. Not welcome in our territory. Squeeze space. Contain the transition. You're unique. Lock them in their half. Attack, best form of defence. A one-off. Positive action. Forward passes, forward runs, runs into box, recovery sprints. Att talking, encouraging, inspiring, uplifting, psychological effects. Tick, tick, tick. Goal mouth action. None in ours. Loads in theirs. Crosses, shots, give and goes. Regains high. Show the world tonight. One in, all in, stick together, hard. Smart work. Enjoy. 18 versus 18. 18 of us versus 18. They're fans. Cage door closed. Can't help. What on earth are you doing? What is that? I think Joey Barton fortune cookies would be a good idea. Oof. Right, can we get anything at Donny? Choose life. Choose a giant fucking television. Can El Mizuni fill the giant boots? Idris El Mizuni, we need you to step up, bud. You're going to have to be the man today. One in, all in. Ogi left back? Methinks not. Nice jump, Alistair. Are the underscore senpai just resubbed for 32 months? Choose life. No thanks. Thank you. Nice jump, Alistair. Jim MySpace underscore just resubbed for one month. Jim MySpace. Not Jimmy Space. Jim MySpace. Text to speech thinks it's still a thing. Wow, Doncaster's ground is amazing. Ben Geo Cities. 
Chris Tumba. Jim MySpace. Alright, name's Ben Facebook. How you doing? playing at Wembley. Shit. Let's get at them a bit. Let's get at them a bit. Don't give them the whole fucking pitch. Lots of gold mouth action. In theirs. None in ours. 18 of us. Versus 18 of them, their fans. Oh, don't let him turn. The multi ball joke must end. It's not even that funny. There, I've said it. It's like the hand egg or sports ball, you know. It, all right, you're not into sport, we understand. It's just not that funny, hilarious quips about hand egg and multi ball. Give it a give it a fucking rest. Whatever you're into is also laughable and shit, as all trivial pursuits are. Work the ball into the box, lads. Come on, we've got some quality. Let's show it. I'm going to go for uh, pump fists. Remember that today, these fans turn up to us. They can thin. And this, what we're offering here, is very fucking thin. And yet you're also playing very fucking thick. Stop playing badly. Why isn't that a shout? Play well. Oh. Encourage them. It's good seating. You're right. None. We didn't kill anybody in the 2012 Olympics. None. But do we have to literally make the entire conversation about that? Or can I please enjoy the fucking World Cup? <clears throat> it's a dog shit situation, you're right. knocking on the door but so far no one's answering go on Prattley make a nuisance of yourself yes Ogie we are missing our main man Christ. 
I'd rather nobody support the World Cup by enjoying it. What is it? What are you saying? Mm, yeah, go on then, get him off. I'm not pissed off, but can we just fucking stop fucking virtue signaling that you think it's a shit situation in fucking Qatar? Yes! Yes, we've established it is! But we're fucking playing football manager! I have no control over FIFA, lads. There's nothing I can do about it. So we get it! Like, no one's thinking less of you if you don't say anything about it. Christ alive! Everybody's gonna point. I I hate it too. Yeah, we all fucking hate it. Nobody, no reasonable person thinks that Dubai is a good place to have a fucking football tournament. We get it. But what do you want me to do? Is that all we should talk about? Come on. Every time someone mentions the World Cup, everyone, someone's gonna point out. Oh, we're well, we Dubai, a bastard. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Missing, we were missing Monker today. Dog shit. I'm tempted to throw a water bottle. I'm gonna put my hands in my pockets. I'm disappointed. That was poor. I can't turn the crowd noise down because I love it. Barrow atop. Terry thinks Leighton Orient may suffer further. Paul? Can I ask, what the fuck are you doing? Premier League standings end of the season. Let's let's have a look. So, as usual, what happens in these situations is that the club with the deepest pockets ends up doing better because they have the they have the squad depth, right? So Forest spent a bunch of money, but they're just not not there yet. Wolves have fallen way off, lost their best players. Southampton have been crap. Hassan Hootel's gone. We're shit. Everton have been shit for the last few years and they're just bouncing around at the bottom there. Despite having, by the way, absolutely huge costs. Everton are not a poor club. They put a lot of money into the into Everton, but they never fucking do anything. West Ham are doing the usual West Ham thing, getting up a good season, bad season. It happens. <clears throat> Leicester started really poorly. Apparently can't defend anymore or something. Villa are doing all right. Leeds are doing all right. Brentford doing all right. Palace doing all right. Fulham doing all right. But none of this matters. That any of these teams could swap places as the season goes on, right? Really could. Liverpool having their worst season under Klopp. Chelsea all over the fucking shop. Who knows what's going on there? I mean, they've been going through the ownership turmoil has obviously been a big thing for them, so that's fair enough. Brighton having a good season, but this won't last. This won't last. Like, genuinely. This is a good start, don't get me wrong. Really, congratulations. Well done, Brighton. 
but you you won't you won't finish above these two i would guess so because all it takes is a couple of injuries and that's it and these guys have the players that they could stuff on there to beat the rest of this lot um man you i mean honestly they are absolutely the least predictable big club right who knows what man you you're gonna get spurs are spurs lads it's spurs um newcastle you know eddie's doing really well there they're winning games they're playing some good football good luck to him but i cannot see them finishing inside the top four they might squeeze into the top six man city and arsenal it's really between these two and the thing is city have an entire bench of players that any other club would be starting and if Arsenal lose a couple of key players, they're going to drop some points. City won't do that. So they'll probably win the league. I reckon it'll go Man City. I think it'll be Man City, Arsenal, Spurs would be my top three. And then you could perm any of the rest of them. Because they're the teams that actually look like they're doing all right. And playing well. Arsenal are playing very good football. <clears throat> Newcastle biggest spenders this season. But they've just they've got richy rich owners now, haven't they? Those lads have come in and spunked a bunch of money on it. I'm a Bournemouth fan, so I'm fully expecting us to go down. But we didn't spend any money, and we had Scott Parker, um, you know, infecting the club with his negative, boring ways. Um, so, yeah. Don't say anything about spending in Newcastle. We have been suffering for 10 years. Yeah. 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 That's how it goes. You want to win football now, you need to spend an absolute fortune. I mean, how much did Forrest spend? Didn't they spend like 100 million quid or something like that? Billing is so good. So I fucking hated Billing. The season we went down, he there was a game at palace where they had a man sent off really early on and i don't know if it was eddie or if it was just the players but the lack of ambition the lack of forward thought and the lack of like any kind of fucking desire to win the game was unbelievable absolutely unbelievable um it's just appalling And that was a big problem for us. And billing was a factor, for sure. Just not, not doing well enough. Why would I not play Spence? Spence has been superb. Why is Ogie out here? What is going on? Stop doing this. This is the way. I don't know who this lad is. Adam Thompson. He's not as good as the beckles Ogie combo. Or, or bogey, as we call it. Rob Hunt is unfortunately pretty dog shit. We'll give Jaden Sweeney a go. Did they? <clears throat> I didn't realise they got promoted with uh, with a team ma mainly of loanies. That's difficult. That is difficult. I say that as someone who's of course been there in football manager terms, but always hard. And then you've got to bring in a bunch of lads. It takes time to gel. And you get you gamble. You buy new players. It's always a gamble.
that's elaborate. Yeah, he did retire, yeah. Huge lad. Christ. This is going poorly. Northampton are dicking us. That's dreadful. Right, it's time to throw the water bottle. That's all there is to it. Makes this the game better? I, I don't... Right, I'm throwing a water bottle. What was that? Get your fucking act together. I want to see positive football. And fucking score some fucking goals. It does this weird flicker now and again. Come on, Archie. Good ball. Here comes the Duke. Dog shit. Get stuck in, boys. Let's get stuck in. Let's get back to basics. Win the fucking ball. Demand more. We've, we've had one shot on target, lads. Longest save I've done. 14 seasons, something like that. Fifteen seasons? It was a long time. That was FM twenty twelve was the one I played the most. Oh 
He was upside anyway. sums us up today. Fucking awful. Look how big I am on the touchline. Absolute tight number man. Right, training tomorrow, that was dog shit. That was dog shit. Disappointing, rubbish, just rubbish. Uh, don't know what's happened. You know, the lads just stopped working. Uh, there's no excuses for being tired. It's too early in the season. But some of these lads have, you know, see them holding on the back of their legs. Or oh, get in there, son. What are you doing? This isn't even about graft. This is just about simple stuff. Some of these passes, just been toilet, absolute toilet. I can't swear I got fined last time. I got fined five grand last time, so I can't say any what I want to say. Toilet. Bum. They look like wallies. Just unacceptable. This is a, you know, that's not the kind of football I expect to see a late Norian. That's not what the fans pay for. Shocking. I expect better. And as do the fans, and they're right. Oof. Bum. Wally. Harsh words. Ah, oh, the draw. We get Altrincham. Altrincham. Diddly poo. I do think American words they made up to replace swear words is one of my favorite things that Americans do. It's quite sweet. Gosh darn it. You know, stuff like that. That's quite sweet, isn't it? And we got our ass. We got our asses kicked. American, uh, American coaches always make me laugh. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, all, we're all, all, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. Okay. <laughs> you fucking, we can't be responsible for the guys jumping off side. Down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We Knock it off! We've got to be the dumbest team in America in terms of playing the game. And I'm highly critical because of the way we give games away. We give them away, period. And uh, it's embarrassing, and I represent that, and uh, I apologize for that, but that's the best we can do. Uh, that's a sad product. So if you got the crosshairs, you got the, you got the laser, you can put it right on my chest, I'll take full responsibility. I'm raising the stakes right now. This is a poker game. I'm shoving my chips to the middle of the table. I'm He's raising the ante. Anybody wants in, get in. You can't raise the ante. That's set by the by the house. What's he talking about?
Anybody wants out, get out. Okay? This team is going to the playoffs. Well, so the ante is a really small amount. Playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Another game. There's three quarterbacks in this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dried. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Injuries from the uh, game. Talk to the trainer. Next. <laughs> Mike, why are you in such a bad mood? What do you care? Okay. You were two and seven, you'd be in a bad mood too. What next? This is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with 10 people and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else, rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them, cannot win with them, cannot coach with them, can't do it. I want winners. This is what's great about sports. This is what the greatest thing about sports is. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. The Bears are who we thought they were. <laughs> that's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their <laughs> But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. They are who we thought they were. It's amazing. It's amazing. Is that the one where he's talking about don't come after these kids or whatever? Come after me, I'm a grown man, that one. Because that was a good one. Find the vid, let me know. Oh. Barry, no, mate. Football coach. Absolutely massive. Watch Friday Night Lights if you haven't seen it. That's a really good sport movie. Moneyball, Friday Night Lights, Slapshot. Those are good sport movies. League of Their Own. Big fan of League of Their Own. Love that film. TV series has been a bit mediocre, I'd say. But it's huge. I mean, the stadiums, they get way better attendance than, like, most professional football teams in the UK. And once you get to college, I mean, it's like 100,000 seat stadiums. Some of them, it's absolutely insane. It's so, so, so big. So one of the reasons it's so big for the players as well is, you know, they love it. But bear in mind, 
I can turn. I'll, I'll, I'll turn this down in the. I can't do it here, unfortunately. Oh, I can. See, it's now it's way too quiet. That's way too quiet to me. So, if you're in high school and you're doing well in football, if you don't get drafted for like, um, thank you. Yeah, both of you, thank you. If you don't get drafted or go to college or whatever and end up playing, you never play again. That's your career done. You never get to play again. Which is why rugby is is quite popular with uh, ex-college kids who want to still play games where you smash into each other. They want to play rugby. I mean, there's no way to organize a kickabout of American football. You can play touch, I guess, or whatever, but you think about the, the game of American football has the pitch. Fair enough, you can get a pitch, but then you need all these um, referees. You need the all the equipment. Everybody needs to have the helmet and the pads. You have a defensive lineup. You have an offensive lineup. You have special teams. You know, it, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. How many people are involved? All the coaches. And it would be like playing football at a semi-professional level with a stadium full of fans and like a great pitch. And then for the rest of your life having to play on your local rec ground with nobody watching, no referee, and you're missing three players from each team. Wouldn't be the same. I mean, I think the thing with, like, I've been to a lot of baseball games in the States, and people, if you get to the postseason or whatever, or it's a big game against a rival, or it's a really close game, I'm sure there's a lot of hype. But American sports is more about going and sitting there and just having a snack and a drink and watching, and it's like an evening out. It's just a nice, relaxing evening out. Football is once a week. It's not like baseball where if you didn't catch Wednesday's game, there's one on Tuesday. Anyway, so you'd probably call that one. There's one on Thursday, Friday. Saturday, no game, but then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, you know, it just goes on and on and on. American football is different. Like the NFL, the season is short. Once a week. And that's it. And it's so, you know, it's like so huge stakes nowadays. All the players seem to be playing like it's life or death. It's insane. Dog shit, Clay. God, look at the size of this fucking nice line. jump, Alistair. There are one twenty three just resubbed for thirty four months. Thank you. I mean, I know that, you know, people play rugby at university, but any of you played rugby at university? Is, is it well attended? Does anybody turn up or is it just basically... Like in, in college games in the States, the entire student body seems to turn up. And 
the rivalry, I mean, if you look at basketball as well, it's Duke against who? It's, it's, it's this game, Duke versus so-and-so. I'm not sure, I can't remember the name of the other team. But it's like, someone, someone will know. It's like the biggest game in, in college basketball, right? Absolutely enormous. People will queue for hours and days intense to get tickets for the game. Well, that's a, that's a kick in the ass. Michigan State football has jumped a University of Michigan player in a tunnel to the locker room after their last head to head. Goodness. London NFL team? You've got a lot of expats in this country, a lot of tourists. Um, there's quite a few Brits that are into football. I mean, would they go every week? I don't know. I wonder how much of the attendance at Wembley for the NFL game is curious people who are like, oh, let's go see the NFL game. Apparently it's quite good. You know, how many people go and are like committed NFL fans? That's a heck of a ball. Clay! Right, that's it. Get him off. Get get, get any youngster nice on. Job, I I'm not even going to look at Mark this Mark Rivitek just resubbed for 32 months. Thank Come you. on, England. Score some fucking goals. 60 to 70% attendance. Wait, as in 60, 70, 60 to 70% full? Or 60 to 70% like hardcore fans? I mean, yeah, American football is just not... It's not a big thing here. Expat, just a nice way of saying immigrant. interesting thought when people say expats they tend to mean people from Britain living overseas but I guess it basically means I always think of it as people from America or the UK living in one country or the other or Brits living in Spain I suppose one of the, the difference I don't think of, like, American friends with this country as immigrants. Because the word immigrant tends to mean a group of people from a country that is essentially poorer. That's, that's the, the way I, I'd say that that language has become used. If you talk about immigrant communities in the UK, probably not referring to groups of Americans. Expat is like, you made this decision because you just fancied it or your job took you here or whatever. You're probably middle class or better. Whereas if you're an immigrant, the implication is poor. And possibly brown. But here's the thing, if I'd said to you, I don't know how many immigrants would go to watch the NFL. Which group of people do you think I'm talking about? Do you think I'm talking about Americans? Or do you think I'm referring to people from, like, Somalia? Nice jump, Alistair! Thank you. Rod Draven just resubbed for 35 months. Flax Egrip Yog Hypers Flax Bold. <laughs> when it just reads out the emoji names, it, it always sounds so dodgy. He's going on about immigrants again. <laughs> I 
I mean, the, the number one is an emigre. Like, make it sound really fancy. I thought it was Jim's birthday yesterday. She did a birthday stream yesterday. I know she's out. God knows what she's doing. She'll, she'll be TikToking it and Instagramming it, I'm sure. Oh, she's out today. Okay, gotcha. I'll stay stay locked up. Well done, lads. That was the kids. And they played Plymouth off the park. Oh, and that's us through. Oh, Plymouth. Oh, they, even if they'd won, they wouldn't have gone through. We beat Crystal Palace under 21s. We are undefeated in Southern Section Group C of the Papa John's Trophy. Put it on my fucking tombstone, please. Poor Jem, bless her. What are you saying, poor Jem? She's like living her best life, mate. What are you talking about? She's having a great time. Moved up to London. Am I going to be able to rest a bit before the in-houses? Christ, it's three o'clock. How long have we been live for? Five and a half hours, I haven't even noticed. And we're not even halfway through the sodding season, or are we? No. <clears throat> All right. Papa John is a fucking lunatic. He's he got voted out of the company, didn't he? John Schnatter, who looks insane by the way. In October 2017, a conference call with investors, Schnatter blamed the NFL for poor financial performance, saying the NFL has hurt us. We are disappointed the NFL and leadership did not resolve this, referring to the national anthem protest by football players. Papa John's Pizza had a marketing agreement to be the NFL's official pizza company, and also had marketing deals with 23 of the 32 teams. Schnatter said the protests were hurting the company's sales. Later that day, he announced the NFL Shield or official sponsor designation, commercials and advertising would be removed. On December, he announced he would step down as CEO amid controversy over his comments. In, in July, he participated in an internal training conference with marketing consultants in which there was a role-playing exercise to help Schnatter avoid making remarks that would cause public controversy. During the conference call, Schnatter said, wow, he used the N-word. Schnatter also said that people in his home state of Indiana used to drag African Americans from trucks until they died. After the call, the owner of the marketing agency moved to end its contract with Papa John's. He resigned as chairman of the board later that day. Wow. Wow. That that's a hard double down.
I have tea in my sugar. I have two two sugars. Sorry, tea in my I have sugar in my tea. I have two sugars. I mean, what's wrong with having sugar in tea? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. It's like saying you have to have ketchup on your burger. I don't. Ketchup's wank. Literally overpowering any other flavor with fucking ketchup. Spence has been superb. When I go to Five Guys, I don't have any, no condiment at all in my burger. The juices of the meat and the cheese are enough. It's enough flavor. It's delicious. If you put ketchup, if you, it's like, if you put vinegar on chips, or you dip them in ketchup, for me, all you're tasting is the ketchup. That's all you can taste is the ketchup. But the, ju the fat and the juices from the meat and from the cheese is plenty. I will have mayonnaise with my chips, but I feel like mayonnaise is a nice flavor, but not as overwhelming as ketchup. It's that sweet, it's so, it's so much flavor in the ketchup. Mayonnaise it feels like a gentleman's choice. Clay, why is Clay on the pitch? choice of obese Americans. A ridiculous statement. Also, eating food. I guess the rest of us should be better than them and not eat food, eh? Ah, Spence, what are you doing, lad? Moxon, that's a good name. It does. It's easily changed to Moron, which is, he probably suffered at school with that. Oi, Moron, it's Moxon. Moron, pass me that pencil. <laughs> Lol. Sotiriu, through and goal. No pace. Can he do anything? No. Cold hand of mayonnaise, you think? Has a. Uh, don't lose faith! Um, Prattley on for Clay. Clay can fucking get him out of the club. Have you guys seen these, this TikTok trend of how to pronounce English words? It's just someone saying, disguise. Disguise, and they'll just read a word. Who's that for? I mean, people do stitches with it a lot, where they make fun of them. But these are like like they're real commonplace words. And who is this guy on TikTok? Some guy. Why are you trusting him? What if he's wrong? What if there's an accent involved? BAM! That's a goal. No fucking about. Absolute clinical.
Well, if you think that sauce and condiments are the crutch for shit, bland-tasting food, Putin, does that mean you would never have a steak with any kind of sauce in it? You'd never have a, a steak with, say, a Bernays. Because if the French are going to fuck anything up, it's definitely not going to be sauces. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. It's very straightforward. Duke, that is such a bad effort, man. You spelt TikTok on Rogan, you old fucker. Jordan Brown. Yeah, all right, Jordan. Let's give you a go. I'm going to put you on for Idris, and you're going to play as a ball-winning midfielder. And I'm going to bring Drynan on. Archibald and you're going to play as a wide target forward with the op with the option of support Duke the Duke sends it in Drynan that would have been beautiful I don't put sauce on the steak but a Bernays is such a good source. And most of them have been carefully designed over a long period of time to enhance the flavor, not replace it. I think chips, a good chip, all you need on it is salt. I don't think you need covered it. You know what, what I really hate? People get chips and they just go like that over the top with their ketchup, like fucking animals. It's gross. You can't dip. <clears throat> and you get ketchup all over yourself. Oh, I fucking hate sweet potato fries. Don't get me started. I'll tell you why, though. For a long time, myself and the kids have been on strike about the quality of chips that Mrs. F orders when we get our avocado shop on now you you could very well replace me getting you know, getting the chips right i could easily do that go in and edit the order but i forget and then the chips turn up and it's fucking fucking sweet potato fries and me and the kids when we're on back in the grocery we're like oh another dog shit week that's our week ruined Nice jump, Alistair! Lazy underscore squid just resubbed for 10 months. I'm moving to Putney next month after the past two years of starting a new business. Any advice for a scouser moving to London? Um, <clears throat> just enjoy it. Don't be one of those people that walks around complaining about how shit it is compared to the North. Five pounds for a fucking half? Are you fucking joking me, mate? I could buy a fucking house for that back in Liverpool. What's going on? Fucking London is ridiculous, you guys. It's, it's so much better up north. No one fucking talks to you in London. You know what I mean? No one comes up and has a chat. You're just having a bevy in the pub and some, some old bloke will come up and start chatting and you'll find out all sorts of things. you got London, nobody fucking says anything to each other. What's, that, what's wrong with you? It's London, mate. There's eight million of us here. Nobody wants to talk to anybody because you're stuffed in amongst people all the fucking time. No one wants to talk to, to anybody. Because we live amongst 7.99 million other people. You go up north, like I'm going to York in a couple of weeks time, right? Love York. I guarantee you, I'll get in a chat with someone if I go to a pub, right? That's just the way it is. York can be a bit up itself in the middle, to be honest with you. But you go out in Birmingham, you go out in Liverpool, you go out in Manchester, you're getting a chat. And it's nice. And people will chat to you in the street. They'll, you know, at the bus stop or whatever. Nobody in London wants to talk to anybody. Because we are stuck, cheek by jowl, 
with literally millions of other people going anywhere minimum an hour journey minimum anywhere end of the road hour next door hour so you could walk around all day in london get on public transport beep you don't have to talk to anybody get off beep you don't have to talk to anybody go into the pub you can order on an app don't have to talk to anybody booze arrives drink leave no conversation you could leave your house spend your entire day out and about in london and not have to say a word to anybody it's fantastic Yeah, it's an introverse dream. I mean, I don't mind talking to people. I'm happy. Um, when I was out, um, yeah, I went to Manchester a few years ago for a stag do. And we were in the pub, a whole bunch of us. And a bunch of girls came over, obviously out with their mates, like about seven or eight of them out on a girls' night out. Straight over, chatting to us. It's great. Bun bump into a bunch of other lads on a night out. Where are you lads from? Chat, chat, chat. Never happens in London. Never happens in London. I've, I go to a restaurant fairly regularly, and the tables are so close that you're sitting... I mean, it's, it's like a family restaurant. It's that style, right? It's The food is amazing. You're sitting less than a foot from the next table in some places, in some parts of the restaurant, because it's, a, it's like a family-style restaurant. And I would not say a word. I would not even dream of starting a conversation with the people at the next table. Commenting on something they've said. Asking them a question. And never. any large city is going to be like that. Oh my god, Gillingham. I hate Gillingham almost as much as I hate Chelsea. A, it's in Kent. Love Kent. Hate the people of Kent. Beautiful county. Wasted on the Kentish. And B, is fucking Gillingham. Hi, 2424. Did everybody else on the bus applaud? What a load of gibberish. Got chatting with a girl in the other, and then she left her number on your car window. What are you talking about, son? Pull the other one. What do you think? We were born yesterday. We're all adults here. Why is it pronounced Gillingham and not Gilf Gilford? Because, you know, place names come from all over the shop, don't they? Nope, still my girlfriend. Don't believe you, because you just said a girl. And now you've upgraded her from just a girl to your girlfriend. Lies. Still got the note. Even even bigger fib. Even bigger fib. Just keep them piling on the fibs. It's now a layer cake of fibs. Well, why is it George and not Gorge? Just a layer of fibs. What's the icing on top? Gill it's Gillingham in Dorset, but Gillingham in Kent. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. The more you think about it, the more sensible it is. It's because different, different towns in different parts of the country were founded by different groups of people. French people... Vikings, you know, the Celts, whatever. All these different groups, Germans or whatever, Romans. 
Crikey, that's an effort. How do you pronounce Froome? It's Froome, isn't it? For no reason. But you know what? People complain. If you ever, if you ever talk to French people about their names, pronunciation, French pronunciation goes out the window when it comes to names and place names. So they've got their own stupid rules as well. Worcester and Bicester being prime examples, right? Why isn't it Bychester? I was talking to some Americans at TI about football. And they referred to West Ham as Westham. And I was like, you've, you've done just enough research to be dangerous. Because you know that if West Ham was all one word, it would be Weston. But it's not, so it's West Ham. And they're actually from East Ham. Like, it's Birmingham, it's Birmingham, not Birmingham. But if it was Birmingham and then Ham, like a space, then you'd say Birmingham. But you don't, because it isn't. So you don't. Very simple. The rules are simple. You either know or you don't. Once you do know, it's very easy. Well, Myers, when you come from a country with a long fucking history, it's not all going to make sense, is it? 2,000 years of place names and history and something's been called this for a very long time and gradually the name has changed. It's just the way it is. We weren't all born yesterday, unlike your little country. Paul Smith, what are you going to do for me, Paul? Don't make me bring, don't make me bring him on, Paul. I'm bringing on Prattley. We'll do this. Why do Americans pronounce Yorkshire, Lancashire like Lord of the Rings when they have New Hampshire where they say it properly anyway? It's a very good question. Very good question. My partner is part French, and they drop letters in their words descending into what sounds like groans. French people complaining is like a teenage boy being asked to clean their room. Exactly right. And they can't speak English to save their, uh... Leaves. V. Vs. Le Vs. I don't know how you pluralize V. Probably just V again, isn't it? Oh, I just overran it. Thompson's got gloves on. Oh. It's Newark, isn't it? Right, but Myers, you can say Birmingham with an American accent. Birmingham. But you can't say New Newark without sounding like you're trying to take the pit. Like there are certain things that you just can't say like New York, New York. We're gonna say New York because that's our accent. But it is still the same word, new. But if you said Birmingham, that's wrong. But if you said Birmingham, 
that's fine. And you can still say that with an American accent. But if you're taking an actual word, like the word new, and saying, oh, you're saying it wrong. Like, what? I can't suddenly adopt an American accent. That, that, that's ridiculous. Oh no, I'm never putting Clay on again. He's a disaster of a footballer. Oof. A meaty challenge. Kelman is through. When he had any pace. Oh my god, that was a hell of an effort. I like that, Kieran. There is no way, under any circumstance, an American has any right to say an Englishman is speaking his own fucking language wrong. I mean, Americans don't really speak English like this, do they? They've got their own slightly different variant of it. I think we can allow that. Also, a lot of Eng um, Americanisms, as we think of them, are actually the older English way of saying things, as I understand it. And we evolved, and they being essentially a race of, you know, Neanderthals, have kept the old ways and not adapted. The manager. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you something, boy, that was one hell of a victory. I thought I was lost, but then two late goals against Gillingham, and we were able to turn it around. Now we're second in the runnings. Postseason's looking good, but uh, we gotta maintain our momentum and uh, really grind out these wins, you know, points on the board. They were who we thought they were, Gillingham, and we showed them that we could still win a game of football. They were who we thought they were. Palava's a cracking word though, isn't it? What a palava. Where'd that word come from, eh? It sounds like Latin. Originally nautical slang from the Portuguese palavra. Interesting. The term's use, especially in Africa, mimics the evolution of the word moot. As such, for sense development, see moot. Moot. Good lord. The page for moot is an interesting one. From the Middle English, moot. From the Old English, gemut, meaning meeting. From the po Proto Germanic, Proto Indo European, moot, to enter or come. Cognate with the Scots, moot. Low German, moot. Archaic Dutch, gemut. The Danish, moot. The Swedish, mood, and all the rest of them, related to meat. Interesting. So it used to just mean meeting up. And now it means a point that's like not even worth discussing. It's a moot point. Although people, people like to still call it a mute point, don't they? Well, it's moot because he's already gone. In other words, what are we even talking about this for? 
It's already been settled. It's a moot point. We can move on to the next point. Preferably one about moats. The moat point is moot. It's a moot moat, indeed. It is like the king's moot from Game of Thrones. Yeah, just moot is like, you know, a meeting. Meeting up. Christ, it's nearly four o'clock. I'm going to stop because I'm getting tired. I'll be back this evening for the in-houses. Do join me then, won't you? For goodness sake. See you later.